Steve, I'm going to turn it over to you. Welcome to tonight's show. Well, thank you, Joe and Doug, and nice to have you guys back on the air and live in real time. Um, one thing I've learned that, obviously, with the amount of information that's coming, it's, it, it's if you're not on top of this stuff every moment, things can slip by. Now, by the grace of God, tonight, Greg and I will try and spell it out as to the lateness of all the events that are seeming to come into focus and into a single into a single picture, you know, over the years of doing talk radio, there were so many uh, disparate uh, and, and different, uh, uh, if you will, trains of events happening, and now all the trains seemingly and the natural are colliding, as in literally having train collisions, but also the information is colliding. And the great disconnect is in play right now between being able to sort out the massive amount of information coming. And, of course, we're all seeing the attempt to rein in the Internet, the free press, uh, the thought police are in place, the uh, Defense Advanced Research Products, uh, Projects Agency, is DARPA is working overtime to be able to read people's minds. All the stuff we wrote about 20 years ago, Doug and Joe, especially in Genetic Armageddon, is now here. So having said everything that Greg uh, Evenson has written about, uh, over the years spoken about, uh, had his uh, meetings all over the country to try and prepare and to warn, now the headlines are screaming to uh, anybody that, and I would say this, can, can even think rationally or historically as to the lateness of the hour, and yet, well, we on the Internet and on alternative talk radio get a massive amount of real data, the majority of people still, the majority, and many of the cases in our own families, do not understand the lateness of the hour. And by great disconnect, it seems like, and I'm going to turn right over to Greg and let him start, and then we'll go back and forth as we usually do. The great disconnect seems that there is no ability to apply thinking beyond what the contemporary set of circumstances indicate. In other words, life is still going along the same as it's gone along, freedom slipping away, new draconian legislation, the American public being absolutely vilified. And years ago, Doug, I think when I started on talk radio, I started talking about identify, vilify, nullify, destroy. And now we've come to the nullification uh, phase of truth, and the next uh, uh, phase is the destruction of the truth tellers. So tonight as we go on the air, we've got so many things to talk about, but the, the point that everyone has got to ask the Lord, and they have to go to the Lord on this, Lord, am I seeing the world through the way I want to see it, or are you showing me the things you want me to see because I'm failing to emotionally come to grips with what is really transpiring? Good example, as we keep hearing that uh, uh, there's more and more uh, – uh, armor going to the Ukraine today where the United States, I think, dropped off over 100 pieces of artillery into Latvia. The point being is, is that nothing seems to be settling down. You couldn't send more strident signals and absolutely in-your-face uh, uh, directives than uh, President Putin has shared with the United States, yet uh, our president made the statement that, you know, Putin is our number one enemy. So, you know, this whole thing it becomes beyond the theater of the absurd, uh, Doug, Joe, Greg. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Greg, because, again, the great disconnect, as I'm using that word tonight, is simply the fact of not being able to apply the information that Greg, myself, others, you guys have put out, your guests have put out, Paul McGuire, all oh, good night. It just goes on and on and on. And please, I'm not trying to point out anyone at the exclusion of anybody else, but to get to the topic tonight, people have got to understand that a change has taken place. And I'll make this statement. The United States of America, that was, no longer exists. You've seen the Republican Party sell you down the tube, those of you who are looking for a political solution to a spiritual problem, shake your head as Boehner turns into the quintessential uh, uh, bottom-embracing uh, uh, conservative, and absolutely everything heads towards uh, uh, the eventual blow-up of WW3, World War III, 
We've seen that uh, British helicopters have been shot down by the Iraqis, dropping supplies to ISIS. We've seen and heard C-130s of the United States dropping. So the point being is, is that in the theater of the absurd, the only losers are the people that still believe everything is fine and nothing changes for the worse. So tonight I pray by the grace of God that you'll incline your ears unto understanding. As I've said for 20-some years on talk radio, take it to the Lord in prayer. If there are some things that are hard for you to understand or grasp, please take it to the Lord in prayer and ponder these things to ask yourself, what has become of this once great nation, and how have the American people turned into the uh, powers that be's worst enemy? Go ahead, Greg. Well, thank you, Steve. Uh, uh, Steve and uh, Doug and Joe, it's uh, a wonderful privilege once again to be with you. Uh, I'm on the uh, far side of the recovery from some pneumonia uh, uh, on top of everything else. So uh, bear with me tonight, folks. My voice sounds a little bit different. It's just because of the uh, after effects. Gentlemen, I I don't know that I can put into words. First of all, Steve, thank you very much for that uh, introduction. It was timely, cogent. Uh, it was it was common sense, and it really does strike to the heart of where I think this is going to go tonight. You know, we've shared so many broadcasts, Steve, in uh, various venues of, of concerning events and things that are coming, things that have happened, as you uh, uh, so eloquently said, uh, and yet uh, people continue uh, to deny and look the other way because it's more convenient. It's simply a matter of choice uh, that they're making. Look, if 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 the four of us are walking in in the woods around where I live, I have to tell you, if if a, if a large black bear were to walk up behind one of you uh, and you didn't see it coming, uh, I would tell you. I'd, I'd make some kind of signal, or or I'd just say, uh, now don't panic. Uh, but but <laughs> there's there's a bear coming up behind you, and and I and number one, I would feel that obligation. Uh, to do that because I'm 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 a human being, a guy that uh, tried for years and years in in both military and law enforcement uh, to help people, uh, not to be a hindrance to them. I was a peace officer, and I I viewed it very uh, respectfully that way, and so I would try to help. But if you're standing there, looking at me and seeing the expression of my face, and listening to my words. And saying, "Oh no, not really. Uh, I don't believe you, Greg. That's that's not happening." And and at that same moment, uh, the bear comes up and decides that uh, uh, your leg looks like a, a, a pretty good hors d'oeuvre. Uh, I just I just wonder then what your reaction is going to be. And and if we can get through that silly metaphor, I, I simply want you to know that we are in that time at this moment when you have been warned, you have been given. Uh, the best information available on planet Earth. We're going to give you a bunch more tonight. And and if this does not light your fire, then your wood's wet. And you're not going to get anywhere. And I refer you to Isaiah uh, chapter 57, verse 1. It says, The righteous uh, perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous are taken away from the evil yet to come. Now, I I cannot be more precise. There is a time that we are entering right now where the military and law enforcement agencies, and I'm sorry to tell you that there is still a fairly significant number of both that will follow their orders. And when that occurs, the days that we have seen and lived through right now up to this point will be Sunday afternoon in the park compared with what is coming. There will be no backup when that door slams behind you. When you turn around to open that door, all you get is a concrete wall. The door is gone. You cannot possibly absorb what's going to take place on a national and an international level with whatever you think you have in this world at this moment if you have not prepared. First, spiritually. First, foremost, and always, spiritually. If you don't have a relationship 
with Jesus Christ, and you have not begged the Lord himself to forgive you, then you must do that. Secondly, if you have not prepared your family, then you are negligent men. And if you have not uh, established a plan to deal with whatever will be coming out of Washington next, then you are negligent again. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to put it on the government that they should have taken care of you. I'm not going to put it on the states that somehow they should be issuing programs uh, that you can uh, uh, take in and uh, get some kind of card from the state uh, so that you can run it through the machine and, and get whatever you want. Uh, it's not going to happen that way. It's not now and not ever. When you consider the technology that we have in this nation that has built great under, underground complexes, some stretching out under the ocean, so that we have that cushion should there be an asteroid strike or whatever it might be, you, you've got to understand that there is only so much that you could rely on anyone else to do except Jesus Christ. But in the end of it, when you're standing there trying to justify to your family and your friends and those around you why things are happening, you won't have an answer. And when they say, well, what are we going to do? You won't have an answer. And when they say, What's going to happen to us? You won't have an answer. So it is way past time. Not to, we always qualify it this way, and I'm sorry, I, I guess we shouldn't, but I do because, again, I'm a human, and, I, and I'm sympathetic to those that have uh, closed their eyes and ears to what's happening. And so I'm saying to you one more time, would you please listen? Listen tonight carefully. And as this information is imparted, some of it is out there in in the zone where, you know, you're going to say, well, how does that affect me? Well, it doesn't directly affect you, but it, it indirectly affects you and is a cause and effect for the other issues that will be coming your way because of government edicts or government claims that, that we must do this or that because... Uh, it's in our safety and security interest to do so. Now, with that that little bit of an opening, uh, uh, I have to tell you, gentlemen, uh, I didn't realize until I got up this morning uh, that 65 years ago today uh, I was born. Uh, and I've never called it my birthday. I've always called it my anniversary of my birthday. Uh, so it's really a double privilege for me to be on, on this day with you. Wow. Um, I, yeah. Well, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I know that's kind of self-serving. Didn't mean it that way. Uh, no, but, not at all. But Happy just, birthday, my friend. Well, thank you so much. Uh, bless you too. Uh, look, uh, Steve. The first one I want to touch on today. Then I'm going to hand it back to you for a little bit. Let my voice rest. If I get a, if I uh, talk for ten or twelve minutes, then I can uh, hand it back to you. I get a little chance to rest. Um, there is uh, uh, several, as you know, Steve, and I've shared these with you because. I know that you are a great arbiter of information. Um, you are a, um, a fellow that gathers better than most uh, military intelligence uh, folks that I know. And uh, you, when you take it, uh, you put in not only your own evaluation, and uh, maybe a hypothesis will come out of that, but more often than not, it's not. It's not guesswork. Uh, you use uh, the information you have from your sources, and uh, more times than not, the information I have and the information you have coincides uh, directly, and, and we, can, we can come to a conclusion. Uh, we wouldn't tell you that they're always uh, perfect, uh, but we put the best uh, effort we can into it. We're kind of the, the uh, modern version of the dew line. You know, the dew line in the 1950s, distant early warning. Uh, we're, we call ourselves watchmen, I guess, and also, but uh, the dew line was there to intercept uh, Soviet bombers when they came across the Arctic Circle. And, and now I see it as that distant early warning must now become much closer. And as we've talked many times about uh, the marching uh, hordes on the, on the fortress or the castle, and uh, how as far out as they could see when the dust trail appeared, uh, the first warning went up. 
uh, when they could actually see uh, the banners waving or the horses moving. Uh, it was a level two warning, and level three was when they were outside the gates. Uh, we are we are at that point when we see the catastrophic failure of the Republican majority in Congress, even early on like it is. And we see what appears to be selling out by the Speaker of the House to the Democrats to achieve whatever agenda it is that he's got. Maybe it's just to retain his speakership. Uh, Julie, if you're listening out in Ohio, uh, you need to get rid of that guy. Uh, vote him out. Uh, it, it's, it's, it really comes down to we are no longer able to affect change. I had um, probably, Steve, and then I'll turn it right over to you, probably 300 in the last uh, um, couple of weeks write to me and, and say, are you ever going to say anything good about the country? Are you ever going to be able to give us any hope or promise? And I thought for a moment, you know, these poor folks that listen have got to be reaching deep inside and saying, um, my view is probably not. But I've got a reflective piece uh, that I wrote uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, the Lord woke me up about 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, gave me the first line. And I mean, I mean it, folks. I was asleep, and I woke up, and here it was. So I wrote it. There's, there's 30, 33 verses. Uh, it, it can be done in a ballad form, but it was meant... Uh, to give you an introspective look at what we have been and what we still could be. But whether or not we can pull it off, well, we'll just have to wait and see. So with that, Steve, um, I, I'm anxious to hear what you have to say tonight because I love the way we can dovetail off uh, what's going on. I'm going to cover Operation Blowtorch uh, when you come back, when I come back. Okay, well, Greg, God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, as I, as I put up in my alerts, too, please uh, continue to intercede for Greg. Great is the warfare against him. He had a really bad case of pneumonia, and uh, by the grace of God, he's still been with us. And I want to take this time, Greg, to thank the intercessors worldwide that have been praying for you and, and believing. By the way, happy birthday, and uh, thank God you're still with us. But also, you know, the thing that is impressing on my spirit, ladies and gentlemen, is this. When Greg opened with that scripture, you know, I, I know exactly what that means. And I know that, and you should too, a lot of us have lost loved ones. We've seen men and women of God go to be with the Lord. And that's the scripture that applies. Pastor Bruce York, I remember when the Lord took him. And I remember in the shower when just saying, Lord, either heal him. I was in the shower saying, Lord, either heal him or take him. And that's the Lord. Uh, that's the scripture God gave me, that he takes them away. The righteous are spared for the evil to come. It doesn't comfort everyone, and it didn't comfort me, but I understood what it was saying. Before I go on, I want to give you the word that uh, I believe is for tonight for everyone. I want everyone to print this scripture out and start letting it indelibly impress your spirit. It's Isaiah 41, 10 through 13. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will uphelp thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all that they were at, behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they shall they shall that I'm sorry, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee, shall be as nothing, as a thing of naught. Now here it is, ladies and gentlemen, for I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. And that's what tonight, I guess if there's a foundational uh, framework of Scripture, it is that promise in Isaiah 41, 10 through 13, for God says, Three separate times, fear not, don't be dismayed, for I am thy God. And in the day of evil reports, and I have to encourage myself in the Lord, 
uh, not daily, that would be a lie, but sometimes hourly. And thank you for the intercessors and all those who keep me and Greg and Doug and Joe covered in prayer. But because uh, it's almost like the evil reports now are accelerating like Gatling gun fire out of an AC-130 gunship. In other words, you know, it's not. There's no time to reload. The rounds just keep coming in, coming in, coming in, and it's like you're you're in a in a fox uh, hole, basically just trying to pray. Your your body's up against the wall, and you're just trying to pray. Oh Lord, don't let the next one hit me. In the Psalm 11, verse 3, and this is where I, I think, Greg, uh, Doug, and Joe, the disconnect comes in. It is really difficult for people to really, and I mean this honestly, understand that when the Bible says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Greg just basically uh, shared his thoughts to the people in Ohio about Boehner. And the situation that we all are in is that we all feel like we want to do something. And at this point, I want to make this clear, at this point, what we can do is pray, intercede, and break through. Now, here's something. Most people pray, very few people break through, and very few people get the audience with the Lord where, where and I'm not saying he doesn't hear all our prayers, but in an intercessory role, as one intercessor told me, she says, what, what people don't understand, Steve, is that when, when I was called to intercede for you, an intercessor literally covers that person's life with their life. So in essence, you ladies and gentlemen, you men of God, uh, far and few between, but I'm praying, Greg, the more are rising up, that's not a put down, it's just a real realization, that you understand that you are the family's covering and that you literally cover as an umbrella. You literally do anything and everything you can. And then, ladies, don't fight your husbands, but more so uh, men. Don't fight your wives who are trying to tell you to get prepared. That's what God put in their hearts to prepare the nest. And I would say this, after 25 years on talk radio, and I say this not to flatter women and disparage men, but just to say, I call it like I see it, I would say it runs three to one, women who get it versus men that don't. I know that there's a lot of you out there that feel isolated in your own lives because your husbands don't get it. I know a lot of you have children that basically just shake their head and snicker. And so at the point that we're at now, we now, I'd say this, Greg, Doug, and Joe, maybe 10 years ago, maybe even five years ago, people would never understand the statement that the enemy of a man's life would be those of his own household. Now we're there. The household of faith, as I've said, in the church at large, or that which calls itself the church, the ecclesia or ecclesia, the called out ones, and then within the household of faith. Kids uh, basically thinking their parents are crazy, yet the parents were evidently not crazy enough that they couldn't raise the kids and put them through college and everything else. And, and so the point that I'm trying to make in this whole thing is, is that if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? It also says in, in, in uh, uh, Proverbs, I think, maybe it's Psalms or Proverbs, but when the wicked rule, the righteous mourn. And if it doesn't break your heart, here's something I want to share tonight, too. I said, Lord, how, does, how, how are you going to soften the hearts of your people? I said, Lord, people being beheaded doesn't do it. And what, what I'm gauging that by, I'm not talking to individuals out there that, you know, get it, weep, and, and everything, but I'm talking about at large, the very few, thank God for Franklin Graham, and don't any of you sniveling wimps send me any emails about Franklin Graham. He's standing up, he's speaking out, and he's one of the only men of God. I think Jack Van Impey is too. I don't watch Jack Van Impey, but some of those of you do that, speaking out against us. But how hardened are our hearts? God rebuked the children of Israel when he said, You're so hard, your hearts are so hardened, you don't even blush anymore. There's nothing that will cause you to blush. If children having their hearts ripped out, and somebody said, You're a bloody man, Steve. I said, No, I'm not. I'm a man that is sickened by the blood that's spilled. I'm a man that's heartbroken by the blood that's spilled. I wouldn't do what I do if I weren't concerned with innocent blood being spilled. But yet... How many people, again, getting back on train of thought, don't even give it a second thought or to pray and intercede for our brethren in Iraq. You know, they're, they're, they're being beheaded. They're being crucified. They're being mutilated. They're being uh, uh, you know, burned alive. Every 
form of heinous torture, every form of disgusting and perverted things that used to come out of medieval barbarism are now in, in, in our, I would say, before us daily. But does that cause us as a nation to repent? Uh-uh. Does the fact that, obviously, the mosques in America outnumber the churches in America, and that the once, quote, Christian nation has now become basically infiltrated with the uh, gods, little Gs, the little demons, Paul says they're demons, and every shrine and temple to some new deity, fallen angel, or, uh, 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 you know, man-hating evil spirit. The point is, what does break our hearts? So that's a question, Greg, I hold out before the Lord. Doug, Joe, Lord, what will it take to get your people to understand we're in the sight. It's not them. It's not the brethren over there. We hear that we're to pray for our brethren in prison. Thank God for Dave Dabermeyer and others that have been down in Kent Hovind's trial. Kent Hovind is absolutely a political prisoner being punished for his faith, and yet the mainstream churches don't even care. And I talked to one of the most famous... Uh, Forgive me, I didn't get to talk to one of the most famous. I tried to talk to one of the most famous lawyers in the country and was advised he wouldn't take the case of Kent Hovind. I offered, and I'm not saying this whoopee, but I said, I'll, I, look, I'll put up the retainer. I'll pay. I even asked uh, uh, two uh, attorneys to do that, you know, and these are prominent attorneys. So the deal is we've got a brother, and I'm told, Greg, that remember your brother in chains. Then we forget Pastor Saeed uh, that's, that's been held in Iran and is, uh, what, about five or six uh, co-pastors and co-Christians executed, and the 21 Christians taken down to the sea and beheaded by extremely large-looking men. Now, I want to just address that. I can't tell if that's Photoshopped or not. Uh, it may be, but the point is is that it may also be a test of the super soldier program that we'll get to maybe later in the show. You see, Greg and I don't sit here and BS people and try and titillate you with things that uh, don't matter. I, In retrospect, I understand now how you can't expect people to deal and be able to embrace in their heart the things they can't see and hear, unfortunately, most people, until they see it. And in essence, that's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for or prayed for, the evidence of things not seen. So your faith is the evidence waiting for the answer to manifest. And so now we're at a time where, where basically everything that Greg has warned and I've warned, and, and I want to share something from someone who is a Cold War warrior, and I've got to put this in my own words because it's, it's just I don't want to bring any undue slack to him. But there was a time when, when the prince and power of the air, in his audacious bragging, there were still frequencies and signals to a lot of people around the world could listen to, and they could get understanding. Uh, now he, and he just shared with me, he said that, Steve, all the reports, all communication reports, no matter what the freaks they were on, even the ones that were still coming in, uh, in from out, of CONUS, continental United States, even those ones, including Russian transmission, they're all being filtered out fully before entry into the Internet system in, in, in the United States. So, And this is somebody that knows this stuff backwards and forwards. And he said, total censorship is now here. I hope, Doug, Joe, and Greg, that people understand that statement. Total censorship is now here. And Here's what uh, Mark Twain said, an interesting quote from Mark Twain. He said, it's easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. <laughs> you know, it's easier to fool people to, than to convince them that they've been fooled. I think the reason that has to be the case is because at least if you tell them a lie that reinforces their uh, sedentary acceptance of a falsehood, in other words, yeah, uh, underpinning a lie gives them a, an easier time with that lie. Uh, you know, it, bottom line is, my friend went on to say this, that right now, the, he said, anybody that looks, and I agree with this, uh, the MSM, mainstream media, has been totally given over, and there is no truth into them. Now, the, again, ladies and gentlemen, this is a hero's hero. This is a man that was hand-picked by the man who, uh, Dr. Teller, so this is not an, a stupid man. 
But yet even he's saying, alas, alas, the evil that they've done in increments now is total upon us. And listen to this. He said, from what I've seen, chaos will descend upon America, which once was but is no more, all planned and now being enticed by those of evil. Again, ladies and gentlemen, remember this, that what we're talking about is a great disconnect. where we're disconnected from reality and the truth of God's word. We're more than uh, multiply connected with heavy-duty or HD cables right into the heart of the beast. And that's the television programming, it's the mainstream media, it's the mainstream madness, and it's the mainstream publications that are controlled by six corporations. So why is all this critical? Because when... As Doug wrote, and by the way, Doug, that was a really a neat way you laid out tonight's show in, in writing that, but the realization that Joe Average or Mary Average, and if your name is Joe or Mary, I'm not picking on you, I'm just, those are two common names, when they come to the realization that the lights don't work, that their ATM card doesn't work, that their refrigerator doesn't work, that, and as you use the example, your pregnant wife can't get to the hospital, there's nothing to do. In essence, when it's one of those aha moments, and they have another word for that, but I'll leave it as aha moments, that everything is different now. I think that what God has tried to do by raising up the different voices on talk radio is to basically inoculate us against the shock, an inoculation against the shock that will come when this stuff comes on upon everyone instantaneously and without warning. So uh, the point being is this, is that there's nothing more dangerous or hated in the world of the Luciferians than the truth. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, uh, Greg, Greg if, I can, if I can interject yes. something here, Steve, and, I, and I'm sorry, uh, but, but I, I wanted to just mention something you mentioned, Steve, uh, two things, actually. Uh, you mentioned the things about the, the Muslims in the Middle East, the beheadings of Christians, and um, I just want people to know that I'm doing a, research, uh, a deeper research paper on a topic that we covered uh, in Orlando at the, at the, at the summit there. Um, right now, the do doors have been open f for years, uh, beginning actually with Carter, uh, but really accelerating under George W. Bush following 9-11 to allow Muslims into this country. What we have, Steve and Greg, and, and Joe are our mosques, and each and every mosque, and this is well, this is what it is. They are teaching sedition, and they are attempting to change our democratic laws and institute Sharia law. In uh, to uh, they're t attempting to convince us that Sharia can coexist with our constitutional law, which is a fallacy. But even more important, the paramilitary style training that's taking place inside the mosques, inside of urban uh, training centers across the United States. And there is training, military, paramilitary training taking place. It is real. The Islamic threat in this country is real. But the various websites that write about the Islamic threat, they stop at that point and say, well, the Muslims are the threats. Well, wait a minute. Muslims indeed have the propensity for the violence to cut off the heads of Christians, to crucify them. That That is coming to America, folks. But understand this. It's bigger than that. They're tools of the power elite behind the faces of the political machinery. And the second thing I want to mention is also the cognitive infiltration we are experiencing. The Internet right now is using various websites, various people, various entities, and, and people are falling for this left and right um, to change our thought processes to suggest that none of this is happening. And we turn to the Internet for the truth, or seemingly for the truth, yet various websites that we supposedly can depend upon, or journalists who supposedly are conservative or at least well-informed, are in fact agents of the political machinery that we're fighting against. And, and we're seeing this divisiveness being created in such a manner that is causing chaos and confusion. And, of course, we know that uh, out of uh, order, out of chaos, uh, you know, that's the Marxist revolution type uh, 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 sentiment for the manufactured crises and uh, 
This is in order to, of course, force the one world government or new world order to rise, and there first must be chaos. And one of the methods will be chaos via the Islamic threat that exists within the United States. But it's just not Islam. It is the power behind it, their tools. And I just wanted to mention that because, uh, Steve, you mentioned it about Christians being beheaded and such. It's coming to America. It's already here in America. It just hasn't manifested itself publicly. Go ahead, Greg. Um, well, thank you, Doug. And, and let me tell you, that was uh, that was perfectly timed and, and uh, uh, great, uh, great information because what what I think... Uh, has happened. Some people are, are going to understand this. Many, many won't. It has been an incremental rise in the amount of disinformation and the ability to confuse the the average American citizen as to what is right, what is wrong, and what is acceptable under virtually all circumstances. In other words, we've been uh, fed a series of lies for so long, uh, we're beginning to think that uh, this is the normal fare at the buffet. And and so when we look at the reasons we're told that debt is okay, it's manageable on a financial level, uh, that we're told that government uh, can exceed the bounds of common sense and even constitutional bounds when necessary so that the greater good of the people uh, shall always prevail, as the saying went on the Pentagon desk. And and you, you begin to think, why have they recruited us and taught us in our schools that all of these things are acceptable, that uh, an alternate lifestyle is acceptable, that under certain circumstances, lying and cheating are acceptable. Now, I, I have to tell you, when you have uh, been under generations of that kind of teaching and control, that it is little wonder that the United States has been softened up from within so that they cannot any longer, many cannot discern that which is truly right and truly wrong, truly moral and immoral, corrupt and, and uh, incorruptible. They, they can't even begin to define it, let alone live it. So we have we have now come to the point where, having said that, we are now seeing uh, mosques uh, that are teaching, as you said so uh, adequately, Doug, uh, these philosophies of of, uh, of fifth column, of of subversion. Uh, why are we tolerating the FBI knows of well over fifty Islamic terrorist? training centers in the United States, and they will not lift a finger to interfere with them. Why? Uh, it's simple, because the agenda is that, that these folks are being prepared to put the coup de grace to the American way of life. And so having had this as part of a national, governmental, White House, Congress, uh, Justice Department agenda, we can't at this point do anything except scratch our heads and say, how can this be? Well, it doesn't matter at this point. We are so far beyond being able to recapture our our serenity and our our, our peaceful way of life that we now must resort to, to fighting on two fronts. The first is intellectual and emotional, of course, because it all it goes uh, hand in glove. And on the other level, we are preparing for physical resistance. I say, Greg, you can't utter, utter that word. Yes, I can. And it is time. Now, the level of resistance and what you decide to do is each and everybody's individual decision. But I, I will tell you that the that the people in this country who understand what has happened and what is happening present tense are not sitting back uh, just saying, well, whatever happens, happens. Gentlemen, it is now up to those who are veterans and those who are uh, uh, leading men uh, within their families and communities to say no more. 
No more. If that's to tell the government, no more programs. If that's to tell the government, get out. You cannot do this. Leave us alone. Uh, lawsuits. I, I commend uh, the state of Alabama and their efforts to uh, to uh, uh, fight the uh, federal government in 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 the government's um, ongoing effort to try and make Alabama submit to a proposition dealing with gay marriage and other issues as well. You see, it has come to that point. We were so long-suffering at the time of the uh, colonists uh, that we even wrote that phrase into the Declaration of Independence. And so it, it, when you suffer long enough, finally, there is a point of no return. It's that point when you're going down the runway in a plane and you hit V1, and when you pull back in the yoke and, and it doesn't go up, you're sunk because you can't stop in enough time and you haven't got anything to take off. It is the point of no return. And we have come to that point in this nation. You folks that are writing to me and Steve and, and other people and, and have this great concern, and I understand, and, and I agree with you certainly to a greater point, but you, you must understand that the country has gone so far below the waves that I'm not sure that even a great rescue effort uh, can pull it out. I can now understand, Steve and fellas, I can understand how it is that our good neighbors to the north in Canada and, and lots of good folks uh, south of the border as well and around the nation, especially those in, in uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, in England, in Germany, uh, Russia, I hear from these folks because they are listening to these broadcasts. And I understand, ladies and gentlemen, I understand like I've never understood before how it is that you've looked at the United States, number one, for leadership, and you haven't seen it. Number two, for moral incorruptibility, and you've seen that fade away uh, 50 years ago or more. And you've, you've looked to the United States to be that great beacon, that lighthouse, and it isn't anymore. And so I'm, I'm thinking, what is it that we've squandered? It's not just a national heritage that was given to us by men and women of valor who, who, who have fought and died and, and, and stood for what's right and stood against the power brokers and stood against the corrupt and the evil. And, and yet now it's just easier not to. And so we've got, what do we have? We have the leadership we deserve. We have a president that can't, that can't call anything uh, the way it is and calls a lot of things that shouldn't the way it isn't. So we, we end up having a, a melee over Ferguson, Missouri, but we can't take care of the issues with ISIS. Now, there's something terribly, tragically, catastrophically wrong with that. And the, and the spirit of evil that prevails in Congress and in Washington and in many state houses is contributing to the, 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 the uh, demise of this nation. And so at the end of the day, we, we must no longer simply sit back and analyze. And we can't just say, well, this is the way it looks. No, 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 no. If you can't see it, then you're blind and don't know it. If you can't understand what's happening, then you need some serious counseling. But if, if you do get it, then you've got to be ready for what's coming. And you must recognize the components that are putting it together. Now, what do I mean by that? Look, every, almost every week or every 10 days, two weeks, I get a, I get a notice from someone that uh, 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 talks with me and tells me about various uh, things going on uh, at a governmental or military or law enforcement level. And, and, and I'm going to go through these. I'm going to cover these, the top five here in the next uh, a segment or so. I know we'll be coming to the top. They are before too long. And uh, so we'll hold over some of this. But, for instance, uh, what are we going to do uh, when, or what's the government going to do when um, there is a, uh, a push on to uh, protect 
uh, an area with airborne assets that are private or that are maybe perhaps of units that don't agree uh, with what's going on at the national level. Well, then, uh, theoretically speaking, and I guess, fellas, I have to say it that way, uh, because I cannot, I'm not in a position uh, to absolutely verify this. So theoretically speaking, the government is considering an operation called Blowtorch. What is that? It is an airborne anti-missile and anti-aircraft program uh, that anything that is deemed hostile over the continental United States uh, would be subject uh, at any time that the uh, airways are closed down uh, and and, uh, flight patterns are altered or closed down. And that would be uh, one of the tactical responses theoretically speaking, by the government. And so when you have it starting at that level, gentlemen, there is it and goes down incrementally, down, downward, right to the ground level, uh, where you've got uh, the Watts program or the weapons acquisition uh, and uh, uh, targeting uh, uh, sequence, where anything that comes into that area uh, is, is a target. And it's done by computer, of course, uh, so quickly uh, and so accurately that that, that very little uh, can survive an all-out frontal assault uh, by uh, integrated ground forces um, when that uh, threat is is acknowledged and uh, uh, faced. But my concern is that it will be applied toward the folks who say enough of this, we are not going communist, we are not going Islamic, we are not going into some kind of uh, evil occult-type government. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that there are elements of the occult that are already within the government, but we're not going to give over to it. Now, Now, if we're going to take that position, then you have to understand that the full array of everything at the government's disposal, many things here we'll talk about later, but I've got them all down here for you to listen to. We are at a point of, as I said, no return. Either this aircraft takes off or it crashes. We are no longer sitting at the runway discussing uh, our takeoff roll. We are no longer on approach. We are no longer uh, 500 feet down the runway and we have power failure, and we can stop the aircraft. We are at the point of no return. Either we go ahead, and and through prayer, first of all, and supplication, and sacrifice, that is personal uh, sacrifice, uh, to uh, uh, bring about a, a, a spiritual renewal in this country, if it is possible, without the judgment of Almighty God falling first, then if we don't do it, now, not 10 minutes from now, not 10 years from now, we must be underway now, then there is nothing left except our destruction. Steve? I think that the word destruction, Greg, is one of the hardest words for people to wrap around their mind because, you know, it's like uh, uh, they can look at the pretty coffin but the pretty coffin doesn't matter how the the nickel the nickel handles are doesn't matter how pretty the brass or gold may be how polished the wood may be the bottom line is what's in that coffin is dead is gone into eternity either into the presence of the living god or damned to eternal damnation and and we're we're at the point now where uh all good men must come to the aid of their country but also, I'm thinking that a lot of women will lead the charge. For instance, Pamela Geller, an outspoken woman. I mean, I, I think of the women who have stood up and spoken out against Sharia and who have spoken out against militant Islam. I think of all the people. I even think, I know Phyllis Schlafly, and what a, what a trooper she's been for 40 years uh, just fighting the progressive. And I'm telling you this that right now we are in that that zone. And as we get later into the show, ladies and gentlemen, the issue that I want to really deal with tonight 
is to wrap our heads around the fact that uh, Hawk and I and Greg have done shows together. Uh, Greg has done shows with Hawk, myself, every form of who can do shows with whoever and whomever. But the point is, is that we are in the full-scale gray terror. Now, interject that into the, the mind of everyone. I've quoted Albert Pike's World War III uh, dream, of not dream, but his statement on generating the war between Muslims, Jews, and Christians. People say uh, certain words didn't exist, but that's not true. It doesn't matter actually who wrote it. It's attributed to Albert Pike, but it's going by the book. Because concurrent with ISIS, concurrent with all this, is the war that's going on in the Vatican. Now, let me say this. I am not anti-Catholic. I am only making uh, the statements I made 20-some years ago. I never will forget, Doug, Joe, and Greg, the day I said that a war will come in to the Catholic Church, and I'm not a seer or anything. I'm just, I'm just uh, seeing what, uh, excuse me, stating what I saw in the sense, forgive me, what the Lord showed me, and this is this is really a a good example. Did God show it? Well, if it comes to pass, I certainly couldn't have made it up in in those days. But the issue is, is that the conventional Catholics would fight about the takeover, would fight with the Catholics that want to take over the Catholic Church and fulfill the Catholic prophecies that Tom Horn and Chris Putnam have written about extensively. And you can dismiss Chris and Tom if you like, but do so at your own. Uh, 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 what would you say, at your own detriment, because these guys nailed the fact that the previous pope would resign, and they pretty well have got it spelled out. And then when Tom, here's the thing that amazes me, you guys, Doug, Joe, and, and Greg, when Tom and Chris go and talk to the leading philosophers and scientists behind the Catholic Church, and I'm talking people that are really, really bright, and in the one camp, they're looking for a non-traditional return of God, but not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, not the God of Genesis or, or, or the King of Glory and Revelation, but they're talking about the return of the fallen one to earth and, and, and the return, if you will, of the fallen angels setting up the old gods. Now, I want to say something on my website, and this is critical. The Lord has raised up a gentleman named Michael. That's his real name. It's not a, uh, a, a synonym or a pseudonym. The point is, is that, and he's he, he's been given some amazing understanding into the events taking place in the world as it uh, uh, relates to CERN, C-E-R-N. If you don't understand who uh, the patron demon of CERN is, it's Shiva, S-H-I-V-A. And if you don't understand what it's all about, I suggest you read this, because as Greg Evenson and I are on with the Hagman and Hagman uh, father and son team tonight, and this is, what, the uh, 10th of, uh, of March, we're, we're seeing things that are happening in a, in a dual realm. Greg and, and, and I have tried to uh, present to you the information, as well as others, uh, of what's going on in the natural realm, but it's not an understatement, is it, Greg, to say that weekly you get reports from different people, different places, I don't know them, I don't want to know them, vice versa, I get them too, of events that are happening in the supernatural realm that you, you just simply say, Lord, your people are never going to believe this stuff because they don't even believe what they see. How can we tell them what's going on with what they don't see? And is that not sometimes perplexing to you, Greg Evenson? It is to me, my brother. Well, I, I tell you, Steve, it, it has been, and the, and the one thing that I've asked uh, God is to give me clarification, and you mentioned you were in the shower earlier, uh, you know, two or three visions I've gotten have been in the shower, and I know people are laughing out there saying, well, that's all right, Greg, because you're all wet anyway, but, you know, it, it really hmm. comes down to uh, God showing us these things, and uh, after the break here, uh, I think it would be wise uh, to cover, uh, perhaps even right away since we're talking about it right now, but what is uh, being held in Operation Supernova uh, in the CERN uh, upcoming very soon uh, project there uh, needs to be discussed because it may well be a world game changer. Okay, Doug, Absolutely. are we close to the break for, what, a minute or two? Yeah. Yeah, Joe, yeah, go ahead. We have a, a few minutes before the top of the hour, but yeah, um, Greg, what you're talking about, uh, Operation Su Supernova, I'm not sure if this is the name of the same uh, CERN operation, which is going to be launched on the 20th of March, 
or they are, are going to speed up CERN or their uh, whatever it is they use their their tools to the highest speed maximum that they've never done before, breaking uh, into new kinds of barriers, they hope. And uh, we'll get into this on the other side, but definitely a story that needs to be talked about and uh, understood the implications, possible implications of what could happen as CERN continues to play God and uh, things could go, you know, horribly wrong. It goes two ways, Joe, spiritual and physical. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Right on the money. We'll be right back, folks. You're listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report on this Tuesday, March 10th, 2015. Back in our home base from Orlando Prophecy and the News Conference. It was great. I want to thank Linda, Sam Miller, and all the people out there. Dr. Clarkson, it was fantastic. We'll be right back. Yeah, and as we go into the break, I also want to just give a shout out to uh, two just wonderful, just wonderful sisters, Rachel and Lauren, who made the journey from all the way from Washington State to Orlando. God bless both of you and Nicolette S. Thank you so very much uh, for your fellowship and for spending time with us. Uh, again, you know, we we cannot name possibly name everyone. Uh, but uh, we we had a great uh, a great experience there. You know what, folks? One thing we did take with us to Orlando that really helped us a lot were our snacks from Nature Box. We're consumers of Nature Box. We are customers. We just don't talk about Nature Box just to talk about them. We we use them. We eat them. They provide us nourishment throughout the day. They give us a boost throughout the day. You know, life is really hectic. It's hard a lot of times to break away to go to a uh, convenience store. Well, you really don't want that kind of stuff that you get at the convenience store. Well, I'll say one of the uh benefits of nature box was uh the money we saved from not having to go to convenience stores and you know you fill up on gas that's enough money but you buy snacks and other things and that adds up having the nature box with us really uh really saves some money yeah my my wife actually packed uh uh six different kinds of snacks and by the time we uh, well uh, on our return trip we had consumed all six bags And, and you know when when you're looking for healthy, delicious snack options, look no further than NatureBox.com. They've got over a hundred nutritionist approved snacks. They've got something for everyone. And my wife, she she likes a certain flavor and taste, and I, I like a certain kind of uh, snack myself. And NatureBox gives you the opportunity to get something for for yourself and for your loved ones. Um, and I'll tell you this, they've got no artificial flavors, no artificial colors or sweeteners, zero grams of trans fats, no high fructose corn syrup. You're going to even find snacks with um, the bold flavors that you crave, whether it be salty or sweet or tangy or whatever they might be, you'll find it. The When, you, when you're in that mood, you're, you want something to, to munch on and you're hungry and you get irritable, do what we do. Grab your snack. For instance, I, I was grabbing and, and eating uh, sriracha roasted cashews and also Big Island pineapple rings. I, I got to tell you, it, they're just great to snack on. Yeah, you can't keep those things around with you. That's right. You just uh, and and our puppy loves the uh, uh, the well uh, the the peanut uh, ones as well. But uh, we want to give you the chance to try NatureBox for free with the free trial box featuring five of their most popular snacks. You heard me right, free. Uh, we're excited about this. Go ahead today, right after the broadcast. Start your free trial right now by going to naturebox.com slash CFP radio or just scroll, just go to hagmanandhagman.com. Scroll all the way down on the bottom, and you'll see at the bottom left there a big box from NatureBox. Click on that. it will take you to our special corner. There, that's you've got to go there to get your free trial. That's naturebox.com slash CFP radio. You know what? You know you're going to snack. So be smart about it with NatureBox. Go to naturebox.com slash CFP radio to get a free trial box of delicious snacks. Folks, do it today. And sadly enough, you know, I warned this was going to happen last year. I warned it was going to happen last summer when I started talking and doing those shows all over the country with this mass immigration from the from Mexico. And we had all of these people, the same liberals that are screaming that parents who don't vaccinate their children are screaming that the children coming from Mexico don't need to be screened medically and don't need to be vaccinated. 
we're going to have all these outbreaks everywhere. And exactly what I said was going to happen has happened. Well, and where, where do you see it going, Ted? I mean, how do you see this playing out? It's going to go to medical martial law. That's what's going to happen. And what, what they're going to do, see, what they're doing here, they're beta testing this. I mean, they've only had 100 people, and they're making this big brouhaha. 100 people have measles, 150 or whatever, in the, out of 300 million people, and they're making this giant brouhaha in the United States now over a disease that has like a .003 fatality rate. I mean, it's like one out of 10,000 kids die from it, and that's in like underdeveloped countries. I mean, it's complete, it's complete nonsense. And the sad part about it is, is they're doing beta testing right now. And that's, this is how they always do everything with the CIA. They always want to see how everybody's going to respond, so they get they can monitor the web traffic. They can monitor all of this stuff. They can say all these outlandish statements, and they can see what kind of blowback they get from the general population. And they're testing us. They're seeing if we're ready yet to start putting people in internment camps for vaccinations. Because what happens when they bring out, when they really do something, when they really roll something out like an Ebola or like the plague or something like that or smallpox, and they decide they're going to do that, and people don't want to get immunized for this or that, then they're going to have the ability to say, hey, wait a minute, we know exactly what's going to happen. We know how many media outlets outlets we have to push this on we know exactly what the pushback is going to be we know the areas of the country of the pushback we need to know where we need to really install the really strong martial law and that's what this is all about medical martial law because that's going to be the easiest way to do this and basically disarm everybody you want answers i think i'm entitled you want Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to hour number two of this Tuesday, March 10th edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report. Before we start this hour, I just want to uh, ask everybody in our audience to keep Russ Dizdar and his family in your prayers, and also Greg Evenson. Uh, we ask the Lord for his provision of health and healing in Russ's daughter uh, and their situation, and also in Greg's life. And we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Greg, I'm going to turn it right back over to you and start off where we left off. Operation Supernova, what are we looking at here? Well, what you've got, and I'm not a a, a guy uh, well-versed in physics, but I can tell you uh, that the ultimate goal here is to accelerate particles uh, to at or very close to the speed of light. Now, for some of you who are historically minded, uh, you might remember that Einstein, Albert Einstein said that uh, uh, that, that was not uh, an achievable goal, uh, that reaching the speed of light had limitations. And, and so what has been happening over the last nearly a, a century uh, is that there has, have been efforts ongoing, very small at first, of course, and then as time has gone on and, and technology has increased, uh, the effort to actually create uh, smaller particles or, or, or actually go to the smallest building block by the collision uh, of these uh, particles uh, has resulted in the concept that there is a God particle. And if the God particle uh, can be uh, uh, achieved, uh, then the gateway or the doorway uh, to perhaps uh, another dimension, uh, they'll couch it in terms uh, that are somewhat acceptable to most people, but that is in, in essence what it is, and Steve, you can correct me if I've been wrong on this in a moment, but I think that's basically where it goes. Uh, it's a little more subtle than that uh, as to the speed, and the speed is symbolic of another figure that we know out of the Bible. Uh, but what will happen, gentlemen, is either uh, they will achieve their goal and uh, a, new, a new dimension, uh, a new level will be reached uh, within physical science, or uh, the possibility exists that a collision uh, could create a, uh, a disaster uh, un- unknown, uh, the, the uh, resulting uh, cataclysm uh, in, in uh, Switzerland as a result of this going badly uh, could devastate 
a multi-mile area, uh, basically in the ring of this accelerator. Uh, but the unknown is whether or not it could do further damage to the Earth itself or uh, perhaps create a black hole, uh, a certain... Uh, which which would be uh, uh, would would spell the end of the planet. Uh, so there are things that are happening. Uh, I'm not racing this out uh, to the worst case. The scientists and the people that have been working with this are saying that themselves. And so Operation Supernova, uh, meaning the birth of a star, or or that that great flash uh, that occurs, uh, has has uh, been assigned to this experiment. And uh, I guess for the advancement of science, uh, we're hoping that it goes well. I wish they wouldn't do it at all. It's, I don't believe it's necessary. But then who am I? Uh, but is that is that a somewhat close <laughs> rendition, Steve? Well, absolutely. But even beyond that, Greg, the thing is is that the, the Ouroboros, you know, basically the, the – the thing that David Flynn wrote about, in essence, this the snake eating its own tail in the Milky Way that basically moves at every 26,500 years. The point that David Flynn was making is, is that that was, if you will, a time uh, line. And what now CERN is doing, by the way, CERN is only 172 miles from the tomb of the Celtic prince, that uh, was just found. And what's interesting is one of the items that stood out in the Celtic, actually the people pronounce it Celtic, prince that was found, is um, a horned figure. Now, I want to share with everyone where I think it goes wrong in their understanding. Everything Paul says in Ephesians 6, 12 through 14, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay? The, he identifies most of this stuff as the present rulers, but people don't understand that if, if, you, if you've any, ever seen any of the Greek really bad uh, oh, science fiction movies, they always show the Greek gods with little g's, the fallen angels, moving humans around as pawns on a chessboard. You've seen that, Greg, I'm sure. Doug, yeah. Joe, you've seen it. You know, with, with the, you know, the very first, some of the very first science fiction movies were basically really bad adaptations of, uh, oh, uh, uh, Jason and the Argonauts, etc. And there, there's a perfect example where in every one of these things, it's the gods, again, I say with little g, the demigods that move this around. What's interesting, though, is in the stuff, and look, there's so much stuff to talk about, Greg, on CERN, and I want to uh, draw everyone's attention. If they'll go to my website and start with CERN 1, I did not put the stuff together. I put part of it together. But the, the point is, is that when God, out of his love, and this is where people don't get this, and this is why I'm going to say it again, one more time, when God, out of his love, kept back the unseen forces of hell and darkness, there was a protective barrier that the Lord himself put in place, that just as he put Adam and Eve in a garden, he basically put us into a place of safekeeping when we honored him. The powers of darkness and the, their servants are trying and going to succeed to literally bring down all the gates, the gates of hell, open up all the portals, the portals, portals of hell, set all that which has been bound for the of sake of mankind to keep us from being destroyed, opening that up. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the disconnect that I speak specifically tonight while we're on the radio is the fact that it's spiritual and natural. And the place I'm trying to segue to, to transition to, is to get people to understand that when Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rule of darkness of this world, he's talking about everything that's being invisible. Now, to CERN, I was contacted some years ago, and uh, even by, um, you know, told by special operations generals a number of years ago what was really going on with that. And according to them, now these are guys that you know you could relate to, Greg, in the in the military. But these are guys that are are no nonsense people. And when they're telling me that they're seeing entities and light entities, in essence, at the end of the time tunnel, they're not kidding. 
a couple scientists got a message to me and basically said, look, this is what they're doing and that what they're doing, and this is why it was shut down. Now, what Joe was just speaking about is duplicating the power. Isn't it interesting, Joe, that in order to break through, they realize they've got to up the power almost exponentially. So as Greg was giving Einsteinian physicists, physics saying there's nothing faster than the speed of light, or that's what basically Einstein postulated, that's no longer true. I mean, Doug, we've done shows, and there have been numerous stories that, yes, things can travel faster than the speed of light. A good example was a classic uh, experiment, two people separated by distance and having an instantaneous thought where it, it appears, and that gets into basically quantum physics, and uh, a thing called super potential. But the point that I'm trying to uh, make in all this is that what they're doing with CERN, and this is, I, I, I think it's just cool of God, where he says, you know, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is discernment. Now, when you look at even CERN's logo, it's 666. The idea that men become gods, ye shall become as God, knowing both good and evil. Well, what they only see, Doug, or what they're postulating, Greg, is that this can only be for our betterment. But again, supernova, and I, I want to make this clear for everyone, the world is not going to blow up, okay? The world is going to hell up. Everything in hell is going to come up. It's going to be like everything that's been loosed. Imagine if you live in a small town. Here's the best uh, uh, illustration I can give you. Let's say you live in a town of... 2,000, you got a prison of 20,000, all of a sudden, 20,000 prisoners are let loose in a town of 2,000. Now just scale that into the realm of an innumerable uh, number of fallen angels. Obviously, God knows the numbers, but I don't. And then they're all released on the earth at the same time. That doesn't present a good time for uh, uh, baseball, hot dogs, and apple pie. So that's what we're heading up for, and that's why... When the angel, and I said this before, if an angel cries out in the book of Revelation, woe, woe, woe unto the inhabitants of earth, for the devil has come down knowing he's got, I'm paraphrasing, his time is short, then what do you expect payback to be like? And so this is the thing, Greg, that I want to, you know, try and get through to people tonight, that in essence, on the left hand, everything we've talked about, it doesn't matter if it's a financial, martial law, forced vaccination, medical martial law, all these things, that's on the left hand. The ultimate goal of everything, the ultimate goal of the Illuminati, the Luciferians, the globalists, the elite column, is the destruction of six point whatever billion people to leave 500 million. Now, we can talk about the Georgia Guidestones since the time they were first erected. I can quote, I think I did this one time, Doug, on a three-hour show. I, didn't, I can't say I yeah. quoted every uh, statement, but years ago I quoted every statement that had to do in, in the three-hour time frame with the destruction of humanity. From Prince, you know, Philip saying he wants to come back as a virus if, he, if, you know, if there was such a thing as reincarnation. By the way, they do. Uh, yesterday, Greg, I don't know if you saw Doug and Joe, but the front headline is uh, Google 500. In other words, Google says it's going to be a common thing to live to be 500 years old. And obviously we know from Methuselah, Methuselah was old. He was 969 years old. And so things are going to change. The atmosphere is going to change. I'm talking not the political atmosphere. I'm talking the uh, uh, physical atmosphere. The chemtrails are changing it. And what happens is, is that these entities have to take on physicality. And one of the ways they take on physicality, and this was told to me by a well, I can't say that, by a multiple star general, higher than most people are aware of, is, is that they need to basically geoengineer the earth to take it back to the primordial days, okay? In other words, and gravity is going to change. And, and so all of the earth changes, and, and look, at the, look at just the drought. If you, you, know, you can always look at everything simply this way. Control equals death. Control equals death. They control the water. Obviously, uh, the, the, the uh, crops don't grow. Uh, people can't raise cattle. People starve. And at the same time, you know, shot in the arm, shot in the head, either way you end up dead. The fact that the information against vaccines is so, uh, 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 let's just say this, there is no way to say that there's any 
uh, information that can show vaccines are good. Only 18% of the uh, you know new flu vaccine is effective. CDC admits to an 82% failure. Well, I got news for you. I don't like those odds. And 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 I would say this: damn the thinking, and I mean that to the literal hell that would cause these little children to suffer and to end up with autism or dead. And I mean that, again, I will say that, damn to the deepest hell. Now, someone say, well, if you were a real Christian, you wouldn't swear. The word damnation I'm using about is the eternal separation from the living God of all righteous, uh, everything is beautiful, fair, and true, and an eternal, uh, uh, if you will, misery index that everything that even they enjoy will be cut off from them forever. So as the uh, person who was talking, Doug, who was doing the talking during the break, uh, talking about the CIA and the forced vaccinations, checking the response? That was Dr. Ted Brower. Um, He's a friend of the program. He also subs for uh, Joyce Riley. Okay. Well, God bless him, and I mean that. I guess I'm a little ignorant out of this, but what he was saying is absolutely true. They test, they test, they test. Now, notice the ATF, just switching gears, has stated that they're going, to, they're taking back the idea of uh, uh, SS-109, the steel penetrator, uh, 223 ammo being uh, kept off the market. Why uh, people started to scream? But I think what Greg, what we need to, under, to get people to understand, is is that is that how, how do I say this tactfully? Is that they are at the day they come make no mistake they are coming because they haven't come yet doesn't mean they won't come in the future and that's the mindset that only god can give to each man greg i spend on my emails i get them i get them tonight too i spend so much time trying to tell christians that they love god they can withstand they can fight evil don't let them kill your children don't let them you know and and they 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 always give me well thou shalt not kill well that means thou shalt not murder but again paul said if any man doesn't provide for his family he's worse than an infidel that's a dog yet how greg can i say this how and this is a rhetorical question i'll give it, give it to you how can you get people to understand that nowhere in the bible does god say go ahead and commit suicide i've always been taught it's wrong yet people under the guise of a false religious spirit think that somehow watching their loved ones slaughtered is to the glory of God. Have you come to a rationale in your own mind? I haven't. I think they're just cowards. I agree with you about that, and I think it is an excuse uh, that many people make because they simply, number one, have not thought it through. Number two, they do not have the skills or the knowledge necessary to defend themselves or their family. And because they do not... Uh, they they give a false claim of righteousness by, I cannot kill, I cannot do this, I cannot lash out that way. It has nothing to do with killing. On occasion, I'm, I, I'm just going to say this the way it is in real life. There are times when killing is necessary. There is nothing that will substitute for it. Now, I have to tell you, if ISIS attacks the area I'm in, now make no mistake, ISIS is in this country. They're just not organized well enough yet, uh, quite yet, uh, to be able to have concerted attacks on the infrastructure or uh, various uh, population centers. But they are here. If you don't think they're here, well, go ahead and think that. And if you're comfortable with that and let you sleep better, go ahead. But it's not going to change uh, what's what's happening. And so I will tell you that those moments that occur, Steve, uh, where where it is necessary to take that ultimate step, it is something that at that very moment you know in your heart and your mind instantaneously that it's either correct and God understands it or it is not. If it is not, it should not be done. But if it is a matter of defending your life, your family's life, your friend's life, your neighbor's life, because of a concerted attack to take your life, your innocent life, because you've done nothing to be offensive to the person except exist, then it is 
incumbent on you to take that which is necessary to do now. Having said that, I realize I'll get criticism for it, but oh well, I get criticism all the time. What I'm saying to you is, it is coming down to that. We have no options left. And because we don't, it it will then boil down to how do you do that? How do you make that final defense? Well, if you're part of Operation Ricochet, uh, uh, you won't have that opportunity. And here's why. The government realizes they can't confiscate 200 million weapons in the hands of the American people. But if they dry up the ammunition supply, guess what? All you've got is a $1,000 club, and and it can only work once or twice. So what is happening, Steve and, and Doug and Joe, this, this, is a, this is a fact right in front of our eyes. The uh, manufacturers of ammunition in this country have, have been in the gun sites of the government and the anti-firearm uh, industry uh, for many years. But it has come about because we finally have uh, someone in the White House uh, that doesn't care and will not be stopped by public opinion or polls or anything else. He is going to achieve what he can achieve because that is the agenda that he absolutely has sworn allegiance to. It's not about history. It's not about uh, watching what's happened uh, across uh, uh, in the Middle East. It, it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with controlling the American people completely, totally. Constitutional uh, uh, precepts doesn't matter. It is, it is the only thing that matters to the people in power at this moment uh, is that the American people will have no choice. They will do what they're told to do. Now, as a result of that, those same manufacturing companies are under edicts that uh, they are now drying the supply of .223 ammo, uh, the same as 5.56 virtually, just just, uh, uh, the same ammo, Uh, one's military and one's civilian designation. But it doesn't matter. If that is gone, it's a very, very popular uh, uh, round. Uh, it has some ballistic limitations. We don't need to discuss that, but but it is very popular. Now, these companies understand that they are going to reach a point where they can no longer manufacture to the general public. They can to the military and to police agencies, but not for uh, general civilian consumption. The same thing is happening, Steve, and we had this discussion. Uh, that that the uh, larger rifle calibers, especially those in 30 caliber, which would be 30 out six, 30 30, uh, 30 M1, uh, and so forth, all the 30 caliber, 30 uh, uh, 308, uh, are next in line. Why? Because they're reach out and touch bullets. Uh, they they they've got in excess of two, three, four, five hundred yards or greater. And so um, the the folks that are uh, going to wage war against the American uh, population at some point in the near future uh, don't want uh, the duck hunters and uh, well not duck hunters but large game hunters uh, in Wisconsin and Michigan numbering about 700,000 uh, to be sitting out in the bush uh, waiting for them to walk through. So if they dry, uh, dry up the ammo, they can't do anything. And right behind that will come uh, 45 caliber, 40 caliber, 9 millimeter, and so forth, right down the line. So Thanks, that Greg. those, yes. Sorry for interrupting, but you mentioned that the, there was a, an edict issued. Uh, my question to you is, do you have any information that the government is paying these companies uh, extra money to make sure that this happens, or is this through uh, threats, veiled threats of uh, complete shutdown that they're being able to do this and get away with it? Uh, it's not a threat, uh, Joe. It's just simply we are the BATFE, and you'll do it, we tell you. And and it's coming down. They know that, uh, that the uh, White House and uh, elements within Congress are absolutely right along with them, so they have nothing to fear. Now, whether or not uh, these companies are being offered uh, uh, cash uh, incentives uh, to not manufacture, that I cannot tell you. 
I do not know that. Uh, but it, it, now let's let's just speculate a moment, and I'll label that as speculation. Why wouldn't they? They do it with a number of other areas where there are financial rewards given for various uh, restrictions placed on on the American uh, uh, scene. So it's it's like okay, why wouldn't they? Uh, and and I don't know. I would like to think that the management of these companies uh, are so, um, in my world, I would like to think they're so upset about it, uh, they wouldn't even contemplate it. But on the other hand, I don't know. I'm not saying they would, not saying they wouldn't. But it, it certainly could be in the mix. But the result, none. it doesn't matter. The result will be the same, and that will be a general drying up of the availability of the ammo. Look, when you've got... Uh, in some cases, a million rounds going out of a store or or a a, 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 a community area in one day, uh, and and hundreds of thousands of rounds uh, just uh, all across the board, everywhere in the country, uh, people standing in line, uh, getting down to the end of it, and having one box left. Uh, you see. We speculated on this. We talked about it. We've said it before on your program and others. And, and you know, I got the usual email. Ah, never going to happen. This is America. They can't do that. Well, they've done it. And they're going to continue to do it because no one in government circles has the ability nor the courage to stop it. And so they're in, in the name of that license, uh, they are taking uh, the the uh, complete uh, absolute. They do whatever they want, and and it's it's going to continue because it cannot for them to achieve their agenda. And that uh, and again that goes full circle. And for those of you who think it's a conspiracy and a conspiracy theory, go ahead and think that. But for those of you that understand that it's happening and part of our national fabric, just as we speak then you're light years ahead of everybody else. I hope that answers a little bit. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Well, let me just, hey, Doug, let me uh, chime in here. Obviously, uh, I talk I talk to a lot of people, and a lot of people say, call me. Uh, I, I talked to Greg about this a couple of days ago, but I talked to one of the guys who I've known for years and years and years. He listens to this program, by the way. Works for one of the biggest sporting good distributors in the world. He said that they sold 1.5 million rounds of 223 ammo when that thing was proposed in four hours. I then asked him, I said, well, Ron, first name, and you know, there's a lot of Rons out there. And I said, but tell me how everything else is. And when, you know, primarily when you're talking 30 caliber rounds, you're talking 308 or uh, after a certain, after the Soviet Union pretty much uh, uh, was, I say, orchestratedly taken apart, then everything went to 762 by, 30, uh, 762 by 39, which is a standard Eastern block round, which is also 30 caliber. But between 308 and 762 by 39, this is important for people to understand. This isn't just guys talking bullets. Uh, Shiploads of that used to come in. I mean, freighters full and shipping cargoes and containers. And when uh, the current man in the White House took control, a lot of that imported ammo was banned from coming in, and a lot of it sat in ports. But what I think that people have got to recognize is this, and this is, again, the topic of tonight. You must do everything to stop evil. Evil will manifest in ways that no one can imagine. And, and one of the guys that wrote probably the best series of, of uh, I, I would say, the best functional survival novel out there was a friend of mine named Bill. And he goes by the name of Aftermath Bob. And, you know, it's amazing because I think he's on the 12th, the 12th edition of those books and it, that the enemy has withstood him from publishing those for a long time. And the point that I'm trying to make in all this is that here's an ex-military guy walking you through a real scenario who does understand all of the uh, ramifications of what it means to survive and whether you're going to head out to sea, head into the Everglades, head, head into the mountains, or stay where you're at. And there are practical things that people can do to stay where they're at. But, Greg, you know the people that have responded 
the most to my message to get prepared. This is astonishing to me, but I'm grateful for it. And it really doesn't surprise me a little bit, yet it does, is while men will argue whether it's right to kill or not, the single woman, the uh, lady who's a widow, the lady whose basically husband passed away in their 70s, they basically are nobody's fool. And I've learned a lot, and I've learned a lot about people. I have one friend who's pretty much um, well, paraplegic, uh, and yet he's ready to rock and roll in his wheelchair. God bless you, Glenn. The point is, is that uh, people will either be victims or victors. And unfortunately, I think when Jesus said, all we like sheep are led astray, and like we're, we're led to the slaughter, it's because of our own terms. That scripture has always bothered me, the fact that why, Lord, do we have to be likened to sheep? And, you know, I mean, when these the, the enemies out there are roaring like a lion, because God even says in his word, the enemy goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Well, anybody who's hunted uh, lions or any dangerous game, dangerous game is defined as something that can kill you. You know, the point being is, is that there's a whole different set of rules. But one of the rules is, is that you have to understand the game. You have to understand where, what the game's habits are. And you have to be prepared usually to be introduced into that world of hunting by a professional guide. All of those things that, ladies and gentlemen, I just said is what Greg over the years with his Castle Defense series has tried to do. And so, you know, Greg, we, we all at one point in our walk, on, walk and talk on talk radio thought that if enough people could only get it, if enough people would only rise up, wake up, stand up, speak up, and act up, but unfortunately, those people came to this country as imports, now are a protected species, and we have become the endangered species. And if people can't see that, that we went totally from uh, fighting militant Islam under President Bush, uh, you know, uh, um, George, uh, what, whatever his initial was, the last one, George W. Bush, the point is uh, that we, we basically now we have become the dangerous species, and it's, it's like why all of the Hollywood uh, uh, movies are coming out, like the Hunger Games and others like that, that are basically showing people having to vie to literally fight to exist. Now, that could be a cinematic metaphor. It can be a cinematic uh, uh, container just to put those thoughts in. But again, remember, when you understand that Hollywood is controlled by the intelligence agencies, when you understand that Hollywood is controlled by the prince and power of the air, and that total, unabashed uh, or non-mitigated Satanism rules and reigns in Hollywood, there are exceptions to that, but the majority, when you know, you're, you're seeing the Super Bowl or you're seeing the halftime shows, in, in whatever award ceremony, and everyone's wearing glowing horns, as Nathan Leal has pointed out, and all of the different, uh, uh, if you will, symbolism. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, symbols mean everything as well as words mean everything. So when you see the times we live in, and the, I guess the point being is this, is that they have pushed, they have pushed, they have pushed in the natural, and at some point there's a push back. But then again, to segue into the realm of the supernatural, you know, there was a song, and I don't, I, I don't listen to it, but they used to play it on a, a police show or something, oh, what you going to do when they come for you? Well, the thing is, the answer to the Christians, I resist in the name of Jesus. I, my Bible says that we're to resist evil. My Bible doesn't say we lie down and just, you know, uh, basically get trodden underfoot. And I, I've got to share this, Greg. There is a disconnect, Doug, Joe, and Greg, between the people that forget the book of Revelations, the fearful, the cowards, and the unbelieving go into the lake of fire along with the devil and his angels. So those are not qualities that God basically, uh, how should we say, lifts up. Saying that again, show me any victory in the Bible that did not start with a battle. Okay? I want to challenge everybody. Because when you're reading the Lord of hosts is his name, God, David understood something. God, who is mighty in battle, 
You know, God is not a pacifist. And, and that's the disconnect, because there is a war going on. Genesis 3.15, the enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of righteousness. There is a war going on. Yet somehow, Greg, there's a disconnect in Christendom that that's in, that just doesn't affect anybody. Yet I will say this to those who think it will affect, that it no longer affects them, this war will encompass everyone. It will bring them into a place of unimaginable evil. I know this. I know uh, that I can't sometimes deal with the emotions that I have. I have to submit them to the cross. I know that I can't handle uh, the, and I've never seen war. I'm not a, a military guy. But when you get it in living color, shown to you, you know, sometimes 40 years ago, and you see it playing out, and the headlines playing out, and you saw the headlines 40 years ago, I'm talking about some of the things that happened to me, it, it, is, it is more than the sometimes I can even deal with. I'm not saying woe is me, I'm just saying great is the Lord, and thank God for intercessors. Because you know this, Greg, and ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't know if you know this, but I mean... Uh, Greg has paid a price. I mean, he's tried to physically take him out. I'm talking bad guys shooting things at him. And some of you who are so smug saying, well, Quayle and Evenson really were telling the truth, they'd be dead. No, because God has a way of keeping us on the uh, front lines. And, and granted, Greg, I never thought, now here's the deal, I never thought that as I had a rifle, I'd have to have one of those old uh, toy rifles that not only am I pointing my sights down range, okay, but I have a mirror with a second barrel pointing back because, boy, those backstabbers get awful close. And, uh, you know, somehow open shoulder blades don't do well with uh, uh, open shoulders. Don't uh, They make too big a target for the knives that come in the back. So that's we're really in a difficult position and that's where we're at right now, where now it's not just coming from a front. It's not a frontal assault. I remember saying this, at this uh, just hearing the Lord. He said, you'll look to the left. The enemy will be coming from the left. You'll look to the right. The enemy will be coming from the right. You'll look in front. The enemy's coming from the front. You'll look behind. The enemy's coming from behind. And he said, then what are you going to do? And my answer is, well, I better look to you to get me out of it, because I know the scripture in Jeremiah that says, if I've run against the footmen and they've wearied, wearied me, what am I going to do against the chariots when the swelling of Jordan? I think that's what, if for those of you that want chapter and verse, I would will give you chapter and verse for everything I'm saying. Because, again, the kingdom of God suffers violent, and the violent take it by force. That means violent is pressure. You're being pressured. At some point, you all, we all, y'all, as they say in North Carolina and then the South, we all is going to decide whose report are we going to believe. We all have got to decide whose side are we on. We all have got to decide who we're going to stand with and who we're not going to stand with. And I love, Greg, what Pastor Langford said, and it's come to pass in your life, my life, our lives, within the last year in big time. As important as it is, and Doug, you certainly know this, and Joe, as important as it is for God to bring the right people into our life, it's equally as important for him to take the wrong people out. Correct. Correct. That's Steve, look, so, uh, yeah. you, you, you were the, the, the uh, uh, architect, uh, not of the actual lists, uh, but of making sure that people understood uh, that what is coming on the uh, uh, infamous red and blue lists uh, are part of another program here that I'm going to discuss in just a moment. But before we leave this other, I wanted to say to you that I think uh, some of the people that are most uh, they're they're basically well intended, uh, but they're ignorant uh, when it comes to that means they don't have the fact. Uh, they they uh, uh, stupids when you got the facts don't use them. These folks are ignorant. They just don't know, but they always rely on the the theme that well you must turn the other cheek, and and that 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 applies, uh, fellas, in my world. If someone walks up to me and says, uh, "Hey, Greg, you're ugly," uh, or, or uh, uh, you know, you, you, you've insulted me and, and I'm, I'm offended and, and you, whatever you said was uh, not right. Um, now, now I'll turn the other cheek. I'll say, "Well, I'm sorry, and I, I didn't mean to do that." And so I do turn the other cheek. 
But, you know, I, I told a guy not long ago, I said, look, I'll do that once or twice. And, uh, and then he laughed and said, yeah, but you got four cheeks. And I said, yeah, but those other two, uh, I found out many times, if I apologize four times, all I do is get kicked in two of the cheeks. So I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to go that route. It's not an endless insult. It is not a time of just insult. It is how far reaching does this assault on the Christian or the non-Christian, but specifically in this case, how far do Christians go in their ability or their desire or their, their tactics to defend themselves? Now, part of what I do is go around the country and teach people uh, about, about defense tactics. And, and I'm not talking hand-to-hand. Uh, we've done a little bit of that, but mostly it is setting up a, a defensive perimeter and operating within that and uh, Cherokee fires or underground fires. And the things that make sense to people that are just wanting to be able uh, to have a chance uh, if the grid goes down. Ninety percent of the American public will be gone. What is it, Steve, six, nine months after an EMP pulse, uh, I don't want to be in that 90% if I can uh, help it. I've got uh, some police officers uh, in the St. Louis area. Uh, uh, this uh, one that called me uh, said she wanted uh, she said, police officers. She said, we need your training. We've got some tactical training, but we need what you train. So I'm trying to work it out in June to get down to St. Louis. It's a little warm down there then, but uh, after the winter I've had, I'll be glad to go. Um, but but the thing of it is, uh, they are right there on the cutting edge saying, this isn't so we can be better police officers. This is so we can protect our families. This is so we can do what we must do uh, when we need to do it. And so you look at those things, and then you contemplate uh, the uh, Operation Lightning Strike, uh, which is the government's uh, theoretical uh, program uh, to deal with those that are considered to be acute resistance people, some leaders, some not, but resistance nonetheless. They must soften up the belly of resistance by doing what uh, you have been warning for years, and that is uh, by taking out those people that are priority targets and those that are secondary targets. But lightning strike, meaning done so quickly that people don't even understand what's happening. Now, does that mean by electronic means? Could be, in part. Does that mean general uh, airborne or ground assault? Could be. Uh, Certainly, uh, especially if you're using uh, ISIP, uh, um, programs, which is an integrated uh, super soldier program, uh, where uh, all comms are hooked to satellites. Uh, there is no, uh, it's seamless in communications, uh, that there is uh, uh, the, the uh, body that's being perfected, uh, partly in, uh, uh, in inorganic material, uh, impervious to small arms, but integrated with the biological. And then, uh, uh, you know, you've got uh, rapid deployment of uh, capabilities, uh, and they were, would be used as the so-called shock troops. You can, you can under, uh, understand that. And uh, they're engaged uh, for uh, defensive functions or offensive functions. Uh, but whatever it is, it's going to be a tactical enhancement on the battlefield that we've never seen before. So ISIP, uh, meaning integrated, super soldier programs are in place and as the uh, the uh, researcher told me uh, that called a couple of years ago uh, my wife was sitting in the front room I had the phone on speakers I do simply because I've got my hearing shot out a little bit over the years and uh, so it's easier for me to hear and uh, he said look I'm a research scientist uh, my specialty is aerodynamics he said I'm uh, taking time out to um, get away from it all, and I'm uh, at the family farm in one of the Midwestern states, and he said, I I'm, I'm just have to contemplate what's going on. I want to talk to you, and he said this specific to, uh, to me. He said, I've listened to you and Steve Coyle uh, together, and he said, I know how you guys think, and he said, uh, I, I agree with you. 
and he said it, it has come down to this. I have developed a uh, an absolutely revolutionary aerodynamic form platform, and he said it has come to the point where the government is now aware of it and is trying to pressure me uh, to sign over my uh, plans and rights and so forth uh, and the design to the government. He said, what do you think I should do? And I'm going, of all things, you should ask me. Uh, I said, well, look, I, I see it as two ways. Uh, number one, uh, you can do it, uh, and and you'll be rewarded, and and uh, it could change uh, it could uh, change everything. And if you don't, I said, you're probably they're going to get your secrets, and you're going to be dead. So you got to decide whether you want to go easy or hard. And and he was quiet for several seconds. He said, so what's my third choice? And I said, well, I don't know that you have one unless you develop privately and and uh, and all that kind of thing. But the point is that now I'm told, uh, Steve, not only do they have a, a major, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to be skipping around, but I'm uh, a little bit mindful of that we've got so much to cover, uh, that the Eastern Bloc, or, the, or that is uh, the uh, bad guys, uh, in Russia and so forth, now have uh, capability on a very small level, a, f- a fighter plane, if you will, uh, the size of a Cessna uh, that has uh, multi mock speed and the latest in armaments, of course, and uh, the latest in technology that can uh, shut down uh, our weapon systems and our defensive uh, capabilities. And so uh, what I what I got when I checked today, uh, the nickname for the same program in this country, the nickname is called the Dragon. And so we're are we looking at that kind of thing, where you've got in excess now? I am told that this would be at least Mach 10 or greater, and it is surface to space capability now. We've known of TR-3s, and I believe that they exist. I believe they're out there. I believe they're in the sky. But this is uh, two generations up. We're talking about something identified as TR-5. And if that is the case, then you see the exponential increase of technology, uh, both at the CERN level and in these levels. And at the same time, the government is moving to restrict the ability of anyone that says, wait just a minute. I don't agree with this. I don't want to be a part of this. Or groups of people. Or states full of people. And and they're saying, no, we're not going to let that happen, you see. Because the three-legged stool that holds Washington up, one leg is power, one leg is control, and the other leg is money. And so that stool must always remain. We cannot... Washington cannot operate without it, and they will continue to do what they do. Some say they're incompetent. I say, oh, no, they're uncannily evil. They are absolutely at the epitome of those who know exactly what they are doing. Don't underestimate these folks. Amen, brother. And and as an extension, uh, Steve, if I can just add this now. uh, Absolutely. You know, you intimated a few things um, about our government, and isn't it interesting? As we, as we, here we are in 2015. Um, I, I believe uh, um, I, I don't recall who said this, but uh, someone had said, "Show me your laws, and I will show you your God." And isn't it interesting? Here we're seeing right now in 2015, uh, we're on the precipice of laws that will be created that's going to criminalize all public expressions of religion, in particular Christianity. Um, severe penalties for those who would uh, pray at any public event, uh, even if the prayer is voluntary or even de- <laughs> denominationally vol- uh, 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 neutral, that is. And all expressions of religion in schools and businesses and so on uh, are going to be forbidden. And, and as we look, too, we've seen this happen, and we're seeing it happen more and more, that public crosses, any sign of Christianity are being removed or forced down. Hate crime laws, and with their subsequent assertion that hate speech is verbal violence, it's going to make any criticism of homosexuals, for example, Muslim pun- uh, or Muslims uh, punishable, even if the remarks are made 
within the confines of a protected uh, institution such as churches or synagogues and uh, schools. Now, this is the other thing, too, and, and we're seeing all of these things converge. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm segueing off of, uh, Greg, what you said about our, our government. Um, we're seeing our schools uh, who are taking over our children. They're punishing any child who doesn't participate in the celebration of Islam or homosexual activities. And I can go on and on and on, but you know we're seeing this the, the change in this moral landscape here in America, and uh, I got to say this evolutionary morality that we're seeing is in fact going to be the downfall, or is the downfall of this country. And and Steve, I I, I want to interject that because I think a lot of people, um, I got a couple of emails you know in reference to that. So, but but yeah, I mean uh, so. But we've got to make a decision as well. You know, we are we going to fight this, or are we going to just lay back and uh, allow the the, the Hitler esque kind of uh, you know, Hitler esque uh, political machinery to take over? Absolutely not. So at least not in my camp. Well, here's the deal, Doug, and and I want to draw everyone's attention to a, a story I posted on my website. I think it's one of the best things that's been written. The end game is here. America surrenders militarily while preparing for war against U.S. citizens. The other day, I posted a story, I think it was on the 9th, that a French submarine sinks the entire U.S. aircraft carrier group during war games. I want to read this. A series of joint naval drills between the United States and France recently didn't uh, turn out quite the way the U.S. uh, no doubt expected. The practice scenario ended with the French nuclear submarine that was acting as part of the enemy ship sinking the American aircraft carrier and most of its escort. Now, the I would say this. Everyone listening to my voice, it doesn't matter where you are in the world listening to Greg's voice tonight, our collective voices and the alarm that sounds, the end game is here. America surrenders militarily while preparing for war against U.S. citizens. You look at the buildup of arms. This is something, you know, I used to read Jane's Defense Weekly because I I liked all that stuff. I mean, I, and, and there was all different kinds of publications, but it, just to see who had what. I gave that up years ago because that wasn't, uh, how do I say this, that wasn't the focus I felt the Lord was leading me in. But the bottom line is if you look at the U.S. military, look at the morale or immorality of it. The U.S. military waged war on Jesus Christ with the Air Force first making an offer, if you will, looking for Wiccan and Satanic high priests. It actually went back to the days of Michael Aquino, 1st Earth Battalion, and I know guys that were trained up under him and with him. So the point is is that in this article, it's by Susan Duclo, the end game is here. America surrenders militarily while preparing for war against U.S. citizens. Where is the disconnect? Now, I'm, I, I know now, and please, I'm answering my own question for everyone, but the disconnect is how could a French submarine sink the entire U.S. aircraft carrier group during war games? And then the Russians came out and announced what Hawk and I and others, uh, Cold War Warrior, uh, Weather Watcher, you know, uh, all these guys have been warning about all these years, that obviously the Russians have an electronic countermeasures weapon system that is unlike anything in the world. So it was one thing when the Donald Cook was brought to a complete standstill. It's another thing when one of our nuclear subs in the Arctic Ocean, somebody says, well, I don't believe that because it was in the press. Well, go read about the Donald Cook and then ask yourself this. Do you understand what the triad America's defense posture has been for the last 50 years? And obviously, if you're taking out uh, the entire naval uh, assets of the U.S. military, and if you're taking out the Air Force, and, and I, you know, people get mad at me when I talk about the F-35. Look, the F-35 and other aerial platforms, they're amazing weapons platforms and amazing technology. But someone should have screamed, uh, help, you're a moron, when we started outsourcing production to China for our leading defensive weaponry. And now there's issues, and if you remember, Greg, the pilots couldn't even fly those things because they were getting a form of pneumonia due to the particulate charcoal in the filtration system. So while China, Iran, Russia, and other countries, I'm quoting from Susan, are building up their military strength using technology that has turned the U.S. military into sitting ducks, and my answer to that is dead ducks in waiting, 
flexing their military and nuclear capability. The U.S. is dismantling their military piece by piece. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, you ask yourself this. All of the reports coming in, and I've talked to guys in the military, and, Greg, what does it say to you when a forward is a forward fire base, what they set out in the, the middle of the battle zone and the furthest perimeter of your uh, – the battle zone or whatever uh, is it called yes. a forward operating base or okay i have been contacted by wives of husbands who can get messages of their wives saying if they go on my website stevequail.com i'm not this is not a push they will be court martialed by their COs. what does that say to you they will be court martialed for going to my website well clearly steve uh, you've been hammering the center of the target uh, so long and so hard and so well that there's nothing left of the target, the center of the target. And therefore, uh, for any of the other guys that are shooting to have any chance uh, of beating you in competition, uh, they're they're going to have to shut you down. And that's exactly well, what they're doing. Right. And little by little, I'm told that I'm banned in, uh, I don't know if this is true, but here's what I'm trying to say. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're talking about when it all goes dark, I have no illusions, and and that you know the internet stays up. I don't know when it goes down, but I know it goes down, and this is why this article. And look, when I see an article that's as well laid out, now why is this French thing important to me? Dmitry Dudeman had the vision of the Russians and the Chinese attacking the United States. I think what maybe 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, and there were two nations that. God did not make clear, the angel of the Lord did not make clear to uh, Dimitri uh, that would be fighting against the United States. Now, I, I understand this 20 years ago. Well, about five years ago, I pondered that question in my heart for that length of time. And in the shower, God bless showers, you know, I think maybe if, you know what? Hey, if if, if you if, if there was a way to basically have enough, uh, uh, you know, uh, privacy and stuff, maybe a lot of people would hear more from God if they stood in a shower they were listening to a sermon. But fortunately for Greg Evenson and I, that's probably the way the Lord chooses to speak to us. But the point is, is that, and I'm not making a, any a statement out of that, but the Lord said, after all these years, he said, Steve, the two nations that will be fighting with the Russians and Chinese against the United States are France and Germany. Now, people can say, well, they're NATO allies. Well, NATO's breaking up. And by the way, the Russians just basically pulled out of the conventional arms treaty in the last couple days. You can't tell me that World War III isn't a big deal. Yeah, Greg, people yawn, they burp, they, you know, go click their remotes, and they go back to... Never, never land, you know, and uh, and and just won't embrace World War III. I can tell you this, based on Russian defense posture, based on their civil defense posture, based on their technological advances that I'm aware of, and I'm aware of them from uh, braggadocious, uh, uh, many times, agents that after the Cold War, it was not illegal, you know, a lot of people in this country hired former KGB and, and uh, GRU agents and stuff to basically, you know, give them an insight and a competitive edge into the world of espionage. Because if you look at big business and all the weapons brokering going on around the world, basically governments use espionage to further their weapons sales. But that's neither here nor there. But saying that, the idea that all of our top generals and admirals have been fired, let go, or forced out, I know we're at the top of the hour, are, it should make everybody, literally, after this show, everyone should be on their knees and faces before God or turn around in your chair or whatever and just say, Lord, are, are these guys telling us the truth? Because email after email after email, uh, you know, people try and send me suggestions. Well, we've got to do this, we've got to do that. It's too late for what you think you've got to do. What you've got to do is basically get your marching orders. And people say, I don't need God. I said, you will. And so, Doug, I'll turn it back over to you. When we come back, Ray, the disconnect. We're so close to World War III. And again, traitors from within, traitors from without. That's what our destruction has been all about. Thanks, Joe. I have to tell you that uh, I've mentioned that I had the great privilege of meeting an Iwo Jima survivor at uh, one of the veterans' homes. And as I was uh, trying so hard to comfort him at a point when he said, why did we do all this to end up a nation like this? And, and I, I try, tried to find words, and, and, and finally when I said, look, 
all you can do is believe that your your sacrifice made a difference. And uh, he, he wondered if the country would ever get back on track. I said, I don't know. And his last words were, were to me, I pray to God she will. Now, that is the uh, title of the this ballad, if you will. I, I don't call it that to be fancy. I call it because it's got that kind of limerick rhyme to it. So I'm going to go ahead. It takes about uh, just under five minutes. Um, it, look, guys, I don't have this talent. Uh, I can write prose, but I don't. I just don't. God gave me this. It's to his glory and his credit. Through the shock and the awe of the Revolutionary War, America thought she could take no more. The battle raged all through the night. The British thought that they'd won the fight. But with the morning came the sun. Our flag still flew because of one. America has seen many a war. We always lead. We go before. Through the battle fog, we led the way. We thought we'd seen the worst that day. The people gathered at Lexington. They stood their ground at Concord. Yet through those years of sacrifice, they never... You see, they knew the truth. They knew what would be. For freedom's fight is long and hard, and never shall be free. Today, it seems, the nations... Uh, I'm sorry, the lessons are lost. The world's great seas are again being tossed. But brightly beams our Father's mercy. Our nation lives and is not yet lost. And the refrain of this is, I pray to God that our hearts be filled and give us strength to do his will. For without him, rest assured, there'll never be a lighthouse shining by the sea. In the second verse, so many men all took the call. We never thought that we would fall. We promised family, we told our friends that we'd come home when the conflict ends. Beaten and battered, we gave our all to resist the enemy and still stand tall. So now, America, your vets are back. They stood the test. They gave their best to preserve the freedom we have left. Imagine now how they must feel when they see leaders on the attack. You see, it's not for us our leaders defend. They aim to steal your rights and make you bend. The moment has come to grab the reins and not resign. My kids and grandkids mean so much to me. I swore an oath to keep them free. And if I must, I will once more march right on through that deadly door. I cannot stop, nor can I ignore. I'll take on the tyrant that's on our shore. I pray to God that our hearts be filled and give us the strength to do his will. For without him, rest assured, there'll never be a lighthouse shining by the sea. In the final verse, many have said America's dead. Her people have become corrupt. I say to you, on the backs of our vets are the scars that never healed up. For when they look around today and see the politicians betray, a weary, dying America must now drop to her knees and pray. For like it was so long ago, when folks knew what to do, it's time again to not give in and to do what we must do. Without faith and courage, we might be just a faded part of history. We cannot fail, and as the saying goes, be all that you can be. I'll join you on the village green to gear for battle once again. So commit to God and your fellow man that we will fight and never bend. Down the winding trail, freedom's flag still waves for the land of the free and the home of the brave. So these take these words as comfort now and get your family ready. I'll say one more time, a final time to you, be true and always steady. I pray to God that our hearts be filled and give us strength to do his will. For without him, rest assured, there'll never be a shining lighthouse by the sea. Fantastic, Chris. Yes. <laughs> wow. Very moving. Uh, Steve, go ahead, buddy. 
One of my favorite things to photograph is a lighthouse because a lighthouse, I'll probably post one tomorrow, one of the ones I took on the Oregon coast, don't know where, uh, but it's one of that I post it from time to time because Jesus commands us to be the light of the world. And if our light goes out, then great is the darkness, but the smallest flicker, my prayer is, is that that which Greg obviously wrote under the inspiration of the Lord would be something that triggers something in everyone. Because here's, here's where, where we're at tonight, and I want to make this clear. Very seldom do I post a, a story and then return it to the top. I just did that. If you want to see the story I'm, I'm re- referring to, the end game is here. America surrenders militarily while preparing for war against U.S. citizens. It's important to understand just the basics of radiation. When Fukushima went off, and I believe that was an, a uh, was not an accident, it was an intentional, basically literal neutron flux. If you don't understand what neutron flux is, it's a science fiction term, but it really exists. Something caused that reactor to explode. Something caused that uh, earthquake to take place. And the fact is, is that now the entire Pacific is poisoned with radiation levels that every nuclear book. Every nuclear reference book, when you read the amount of contamination that's deadly for humans, it's off the charts. So, well, everything is killing us softly with the song of the sirens of the lying devils in the mainstream media, lying devils from the siren song in the mainstream media, there are glimpses of reality. And I want to share one thing. I'm, I'm excerpting this. Doug, do you remember, Joe, do you remember, and I know, Greg, you remember, when they do, the DHS ordered up the uh, targets of a little boy with a real gun, a pregnant woman, little kids on swings, and basically made them the enemies? Mm-hmm. Gone were the Osama bin Laden targets and the typical, if you will, caricatures of, uh, uh, of uh, you know, what most people would perceive as terrorists. That did something, you guys. That programmed an entire thought process that men are always been fair game, but women and children have become fair game. And what we see in the Middle East, that's why the spirit realm, and I want to hit that in the last hour, the spirit realm, these evil spirits, they show no mercy to children. Obviously, the Illuminati sacrifices them. They rape them. They turn them into sex slaves. They do every form of debauchery that I won't go into on the radio. You know, people, when uh, Ted Gunderson was alive and others, they were talking about this stuff, but it just went over most people's backs. And you get the British monarchy involved in pedophilia and the entire country of Great Britain covering up for, you know, world-class pedophiles and leading to the highest uh, ranks of American politics. Oprah Winfrey did a show, I think she showed eight houses of uh, prostitution for children that was taken off and I don't even know that it's I think it was scrubbed from the net but let me read this because this is something that again Susan wrote I believe this is a magnum opus that's Latin for a large and important work of uh, of a body of literature I think it's that important I don't say that to flatter her I don't say that to flatter anyone I fear God too much to flatter anyone But listen to this. This should get into, Doug, what you and I first started years ago together in the HQ Intel Alert, trying to tell people what was going on up in uh, New York and the area with uh, all of the activity. But listen, this I just want to quote and read this. DHS has labeled right-wing extremists a greater threat than the terror organizations called ISIS, who behead journalists and aid workers, kill Christians across the globe, burn a Jordanian pilot in a cage, then filmed it all and released the videos to the public. In 2013, it was reported that the Army training material listed evangelical Christians, now listen to this, Catholics, Catholics, and some Jews as religious extremists alongside the Ku Klux Klan, Hamas, and Al-Qaeda. Remember the formula, ladies and gentlemen, I-V-N-D. Identify, vilify. Here's the vilification now. Nullification you're seeing, and destruction will follow. Perhaps one of the most disturbing visual examples of this type of targets our militarized police are being trained to take out comes from 2013 reports where it was revealed that law enforcement agencies were using actual targets that represent the threat of a pregnant woman and children. Doug, this broke my heart. I remember being on your show back then and just you know, pulling hair out and screaming 
to the point, not screaming, I don't know how to scream, I can't physically scream with my voice, but be as emphatic emotionally as I could get. But guess what? So the company that made the targets then said, we're sorry, we apologize. That's not the issue. The issue is what kind of monstrous, hedonist, absolute debauched creatures from hell slithering their way into our dimension would have people thinking that somehow a woman, you know, and they make her holding a gun, it's probably because she's getting ready to be raped, you know, that uh, and showing her in a nursery. These are all psychologically profiling and psychologically programming. Now, I ask you this. Haven't little kids been arrested holding toy guns? Haven't little kids been blown away holding toy guns? Haven't we had pregnant mothers killed by SWAT troops, or at least mothers killed in Washington, D.C.? You mean to tell me one 260-pound fit as a fiddle, six-foot-six guy, can't basically pull a woman out of the car without blowing her brains out and however many rounds were fired into her body. I'm talking about the lady at uh, at uh, the Capitol building. Uh, what What's happening, you guys, and this is something that people have to understand, behind every dehumanizing, inhumanizing act or action is a demon, is a fallen angel. Behind every political self-indulgent whore who's too busy with someone else's private parts to care about the country that made him great. That's as tactful as I know how to be. And oh, by the way, as someone who's written about ancient history to the degree I have, and who has basically uh, chronolo- chron- I say this, chronicled and chronologically put things into their proper time frame, at least from a perspective I can justify with ancient writings, myths, and legends, it was a fallen angels that taught men how to even become sodomites in the first place. You might say it was a sexual preference of the fallen angels. I quote that in my book, Genesis 6, Giants, uh, and, uh, you know, I think it was Diodorus who, who made that statement. He says it, and this may not be word for word, but it's close. He said, though they have comely female giants, the men prefer the pleasure of each other over that of their women. So, ladies and gentlemen, all of what we're seeing, the headlines are being written by principalities, power, spiritual wickedness, and heavenly places that are soon to come to earth. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, uh, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But you don't get that by whimpering. You don't get that by retreating. You don't get that by hanging out on blogs. You don't get that by basically, uh, uh, you know, complaining to your equal complainant uh, group. Uh, you get that. You get that boldness by spending time in the king. In other words, you must become a new creation. I must. I, I, I look for the day when old things pass away, all things become new. I hate my sin nature. I have one. I wish I didn't. I don't want it. I've asked the Lord, Lord, can't you just fix it so I don't free willingly sin? Can't you just take sin out of And, you know, the bottom line is sin is a force, ladies and gentlemen. It's a power. And that's why to as many as receive him, Jesus gave he, us, the power to become the sons of God. You can't fight it in your life. And to those of you who think that you're tougher, I'll say one word that will bring the toughest man to his knees. Biological, or two words, biological weapon. It doesn't matter. Whatever your strength is, it's not good enough for the day. Whatever your skill set is, it's not good enough for the day. But God can teach your hands to war. God can teach your knees to war. God can teach you how to pray and how to take dominion over this stuff. And imprecatory prayer is what needs to be prayed for Kent Hoven. Literally, imprecatory prayer means, Lord, if they won't release him, then take the men and women who are being used by hell, remove them off the face of the earth. Are you asking God to take them off the face of the earth as and kill them? I'm asking God to remove them. I'm asking for the people of God to say, this is our brother. And I don't believe that Jesus was kidding when he's talking about his bride. I don't believe he's kidding when he's talking about his church. And the word church, I use the word, I don't mean the Catholic, Protestant, you know, Jewish synagogue. I mean the ecclesia, the ones who are called out of the world unto him. Doesn't matter. I see two trees in the scripture, the olive tree, obviously, and the fig tree. Bottom line is Derek Prince has got a great teaching on the olive and the fig and how God is the one that grafts them together. 
the people that simply want to blame the Jews or blame the this or blame the that don't understand. Of course there are false Jews. There are Jews that call themselves Jews and are not. There are Chinese who are not Jews, who are Taoists, who are under the infamous uh, the influence of Lucifer. There are U.S. citizens that go to church, i.e., uh, on a Sunday, pretending to be married, and they're as, as gay as geese, and they basically don't even, uh, you know, have any real relationships with their wives. They just live their separate lives. But they have what are called trophy wives just so they can get by with what they're doing. But God is seeing it. You know, Greg, one of the things, too, that is amazing to me uh, is the fact that one of the least popular things I've ever said in my entire radio career or calling whatever, career calling, what, what, my time on the radio, I guess, is the fact that, to actually be told that before America is destroyed, God's going to reveal the sins of the leaders to the people and their pe- the people's sins before their God. And I submit, ladies and gentlemen, that did not happen until the Lord released that word, certainly. And the point is, as everybody said, I was crazy because things weren't bad like they are now. Things weren't as uh, developed for the for the uh, plan of hell to be so played out right before your eyes. Yet, if if people don't care, I understand that they if they feel helpless. Of course, you and I wake up knowing we're one man. You're a man. I'm a man. We've got what we have, but we also know we have the God of Heaven on our side. And somebody once said, "When God is with you, you're a majority." A thousand, one will chase a thousand, two will chase ten thousand. The scripture I gave everybody tonight in Isaiah is really critical that you memorize. And so what will what will be the defining moment in your life? I'm speaking now to everyone out there. What will be the thing that you say, I will no longer go quietly into the night. I will no longer hold my tongue. I'll no longer care more about what people think than what God thinks. I'll no longer be afraid to lose my life because in losing it, I'm going to gain it. I'm not talking about anyone taking their life through suicide. I want to make that clear. I'm saying that when you come to that attitude, you take on a whole different perspective. And again, the thing that is critical, as Greg read what God gave him, these men and women who have already laid down their lives, what they gave us was a time out of the battle. But now, while they gave the time out of the battle, it's no longer where a professional army will fight over there so the enemies won't come here. You are now the enemy, ladies and gentlemen, and the real enemies have been sanctioned. They're being financed. They're being given intel in real time. Uh, The point is, is that all the appointments in the current cabinet administration, they're all Muslims by their own faith and by their own testimonies. And I would say this, they they couldn't be in that administration. And there is no such thing as non-militant Islam. There are Islamists who are not militant, but in in the, the their uh, scope of beliefs, they it ultimately boils down to this. They believe that they will live under a theocracy ruled by the Iman Mahdi and with the return of Muhammad. So... The point is is that they believe that, and they're willing to kill you. They're willing to butcher you. They're willing to burn you. They're willing to crucify. They're willing to do every Hannah's horrible, wicked thing. And, Greg, the the ultimate slap in the face is that when God said his sheep became meat for all the predators, God wasn't just talking stories about, you know, sheep and wolves. Our brethren have been butchered. They've been cut up. They've been sold in the meat marketplaces of terrorists that the United States government funds. So, ladies and gentlemen, who's king? Is it Jesus or is it Washington? Because Washington is going to make sure that no one's going to go into the new world order, as uh, Barbara, Barbara Marks Hubbard and others have stated, without the Luciferic initiation. David Spangler made the statement, too, that under the New World Order, bottom line is it will be by what? Consent or by conquest, but make sure you understand this. They're talking, not me. There will be a New World Order. And unfortunately, the Bible says that it's given power, the beast is given power to make war on the saints. So shouldn't you, ladies and gentlemen, seek God for his battle plan for your life? 
Greg can't tell you what to do when that moment comes. I can't tell you what to do when that moment comes. We can tell you what we've decided to do, and we can share with you that we'll help others. But the fact is is that you're going to have to be there when there was no one else for that. Doug, when you drew your uh, little word picture and did a marvelous job, I don't think people can recognize, even rationalize, yet embrace emotionally. Uh, I know what it's like when my computer goes down. Obviously, I live on my computer because I'm posting stories. When the power goes out, when there's no communication, the first thing you want to do is run and call someone to make sure that their power is not out. Uh, you know, the answer to that is, by the way, for those of you that have to stay in touch with family members, one of the best things you can do, and this is a pitch for an advertiser because I practice what I preach in this. I've told my stories, but satellite phones are a good thing to have, especially if the person uh, that, you know, is important enough for you to keep in contact with. But all communication, when they go down, they'll be jammed. And then everyone's left to that, I don't know what you call it, that pucker factor moment, you will either have a plan and you'll immediately respond based on your training, or you'll sit and wonder, you know, oh me, oh my, and be like Alice in Wonderland, being uh, disheveled with your thinking, uh, being frightened by the events, and the lack of knowledge, meaning the lack of understanding what's going on, will drive most people simply wacky. And we've watched the supermarkets clear out. We've seen Venezuela now with lines standing, and now they're going to do fingerprint so people can't hoard. The bottom line is do what you can do. And people ask me now, what is the most important thing after getting your heart right with Jesus? Number one thing is this. Get the food you can get because with the drought, with the weather and the geoengineering taking place, I wrote a book about it. Weather Wars was way ahead of my time by the grace of God. I would recommend that to you. You can understand if you make war on the most fertile part of the coastal plains, especially, and, and things like uh, uh, the valley, uh, Central Valley in California, and you steer all of the rivers of water in the atmosphere away from them, you dry up the land, and then you come in and buy up the land, you get the land at a lot cheaper price because the productivity of a vineyard is, is multiple, multiple times of what it's worth only as land. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're under attack in every form, every fashion, every way, and well, it does not yet appear because the television's still on, Dancing with the Stars, and I, I think, I, you know, probably Dancing with the Fallen Stars, and the word stars is angels, the city of Los Angeles, in my opinion, means the city of the lost angels, meaning the fallen angels, and if you look at the root, this is something that I want all of you to understand. If I could leave you with one scriptural understanding, it's this. Look at the root of evil, then you can understand the fruit of evil. If you complain about the fruit of evil without never identifying the root of evil, it's like trying to te uh, uh, t uh, treat one form of cancer when there's a specific area of your body that's feeding your entire body with cancer. So that's where we're at tonight, and that's what we're saying. The day will come, no communication, no gas, no ability to go. But remember this, the gangs and the wolves will already be planning for that day. They'll already be set to go after the caribou. And the bottom line is don't be a dumb caribou. Be the caribou that set a trap for the wolves and then blast every wolf that comes to take the family of caribou that God has given you charge over. I thought that might be a nice way to say it, Greg. Go ahead. Well, thanks, Steve. What a, <clears throat> what a great segment. Um, uh, look, I, I could go on and on with this list. Uh, I won't read the names tonight, uh, not even first names. It just takes too long. But I will say to the men and women who have spoken to me in the last uh, four to six months, um, some of you were uh, completely scoffing about it. Uh, many of you were kind of in between. And then, of course, there's a cadre of you that, that are uh, uh, right with Steve and I. And you're upset because you can't get Steve uh, or I uh, on the uh, radio anymore uh, because you're not being allowed to. Uh, all I can tell you, especially those domestic stateside in law enforcement, the time has come. You asked me at some point to tell you, if I was on a radio broadcast, uh, when things were imminent uh, to the point that you really believed uh, they were imminent. I'm telling you tonight, 
uh, it's imminent. We are looking at a matter of months. I am not a date setter. I did it once in my life, and I had to eat a lot of crow because uh, I, I set the date that I was told, and I think I was set up. But nonetheless, I took responsibility for it. I'm not setting a date, but I'm giving you a time frame uh, that is a, a few months down the road. We're looking at a, a, a confluence of things occurring in September that I believe, uh, Steve, you can are free to disagree, uh, but I think that uh, knowing you that uh, you understand this picture, and I said to you, ladies and gentlemen, that I would tell you so you would have that final segment of time, uh, five to six months, that you could put your act together, uh, get, get that ground ready, uh, get that remote cabin set uh, that you had, the supplies you needed, and so forth. That's military and police uh, folks. You're listening tonight. I know you are. This is not a call to panic. This is not a call for <laughs> excuse me, some kind of uh, craziness. This is a call to be prepared. Be prepared spiritually, number one. That's how we started this broadcast tonight. I will tell you again, without that, everything else you do is meaningless. It won't matter. So be prepared spiritually first. Get on your knees. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you. Walk with him, and you're ready to meet whatever happens. Number two, be prepared in every way that you can be, that you know about, that we've discussed, that we've said before on the radio many, many times. And you've got a great vehicle in this show every single day. Uh, the Hagman and Hagman Report is absolutely uh, the best out there. And so if, if you listen faithfully and you follow what you hear, you'll be up to date and you'll be able to deal with it. Now look, one more thing, and that is this. I'm going to uh, breathe just a short prayer uh, because, again, time is kind of on a constraint. But I will tell you that this is heartfelt, and this, again, one more time, this goes out, number one, to all of you wives of the military and police officers uh, that are so concerned about the orders coming down to your men that you know they are struggling with in their mind and emotions because they don't know whether or not they can obey those laws. They don't even know or rules and orders. They don't even know if they're legal. I will tell you you have no obligation to follow or execute an illegal order. It is not it is not allowed. It is prohibited by Nuremberg, along with common sense, civil law, and criminal law. So please, uh, take note, be discerning, and do what's right. And gentlemen, for those of you that have wives in the military or law enforcement, the same thing goes here. Only your leadership now is going to be in supporting your wives uh, at a time when uh, keeping that household straight and doing what you got, need to do uh, in your part of it uh, is more uh, uh, critical now than ever. Please support them with your prayers. Heavenly Father, we come before you in this late part of the hour with this simple prayer. We trust you, Lord, because you created everything. You are responsible for the universe. You are the creator of our hearts and our spirits, our souls. We turn to you tonight and say, would you please, please, Father, would you give the guidance and the love and, and the preparation that these folks are seeking tonight by the hundreds, I'm sure thousands, but I've heard from scores of them, and I know that's multiplied. Lord, you know them, you know each one. Would you give them the courage to drop to their knees, husbands, wives, children, and to prepare themselves for that which is coming in such short order? Defend them, Lord, from those terrorists that are in this country, those that would do harm uh, to them or their families simply because they're in the position they are. I ask that you put a hedge around them. May they realize, as Ephesians 6 tells us about the full armor of God, that it will be absolutely obvious to everybody they work with. We'll give you the praise and the glory tonight, Father, for that which you are going to do, and we trust you in that. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name, amen. Amen. Amen, indeed. Wow. 
powerful. You, you know, we are at, we are at the time, Steve and, and Greg, that uh, uh, we don't know if, if uh, this could be our last show. The next week could be our last show. I mean, at That's some correct. point, you know, look at the look at the uh, overtaking of the internet, for example, by the FCC, the 322 page document. Uh, and 322 being a very uh, key number in the uh, uh, Illuminati uh, uh, mass media and the Illuminati uh, control system. Uh, all of this that we're seeing around here with us. I mean, you know, we we could go to work as, as I pinned in the story. We, we we could leave our house in the morning for work and, and thinking one thing, and by lunchtime, our entire world could be changed in, in in a blink of an eye and i think uh steve and greg and i think i think you did a great job of painting that picture tonight um and we don't know what the key event will be we certainly have ideas or convergence of key events but we do know that there is a cognitive uh, uh infiltration that has been taking place and is taking place uh to make us believe that none of this is is real that that we're living in and i know paul paul mcgarr talks about this and others talk about you know us living in a hologram well, well it's manifesting itself spiritually yeah exactly it, and if nothing else folks i hope you take to heart what steve and greg have, have really laid out here tonight that that this is a spiritual battle that's manifesting itself here in 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 uh, on earth and among each and every one of us. And Steve, if I can add one thing that you had mentioned, you know, you had mentioned earlier in the program where uh, just as God puts people into our lives, he takes people out of our lives That's when necessary. And the only other thing I, I could think to add to, to you, you gentlemen, your fantastic uh, uh, show, is this. Um, you know, I, I think we have to be a little bit more circumspect with with respect to who we tell things to and who we trust because i just have a feeling that people have been inserted in organizations and groups and churches and societies and communities that are that that are that are not who they say they are and who are intent upon bringing us down uh steve or greg do you have any comment on that uh steve please go ahead well, I mean, that's absolutely true, Doug. I mean, people that we've had on, you know, your radio show, people that we've interfaced with, uh, people that, you know, I mean, I just got to tell you, the the level of betrayal, the level of insertion, I mean, it's like uh, there are a lot of people, I'll, I'll tell everyone this, I don't meet with anybody on the QT. Uh, so, you know, please don't ask me to meet you on the QT you got something to tell me. If you can't tell me your real name, I will not talk to you. I understand that some of you may be running for your life, but really um, don't um, think that, uh, you know, you just can come strolling in to anybody's lives. I say that, Doug, because I'm seeing it. I want to go to a word that the Lord gave me six years ago, five or six years ago, and I, I'm not sure the year, but it was before it became obvious. It was right at the transition point. Now, people, you judge this and tell me if this has happened, because this isn't after the fact. I looked up, Behold, I am against thee, as Michael, the author of the CERN articles, pointed out. When God says that, he means it. There's 14 times in the uh, Old Testament where the statement, Behold, I am against thee, appears. And I'm reading part two and three of a prophecy. I won't release the first part until I get multiple uh, witnesses. I've held on to it for six years. Some people have read the whole thing, but uh, those are the people I trust. I think you're one of them, Doug. But to the Pentagon. Now, Greg, this was given again six years ago, I think. I'm against your plans to make war against my people and my land. Is it a small thing in your eyes for you to make war against me, saith the Lord? You trust in the technology of the fallen ones and the hidden and secret weapons that you believe will keep you safe. Has it not dawned on you that as you study in your war colleges that betrayal and destruction have come from traitors within and armies without? I want you to think that. Keep this in mind. The son of perdition has been a liar since the beginning of times. And as all empires before you have fallen, littering the pages of history, so is yours. Your lives in an instant, this is what you said, Doug, will flash before you. Repent and turn away from all your evil schemes, just as Jesus, I'm sorry, forgive me, just as Judas sold my son Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver, so have you sold me out, question mark? 
For it is I, the living God, who gave you the victories over your foreign enemies when you sought to preserve that which was just. Are you so deceived and seduced that you cannot see the illuminated ones will utterly consume you and their promises will fail to give you your expected outcome? Now here's the clincher. To the gate openers, I ask you a simple question. This gives me shivers. Who do you think bound the demons and the fallen angels that you seek so feverishly in the first place to lose? For was I the living God out of the love for my creation, mankind, that bound them at the first time and will seal them in chains at the final time? The promise of eternal life apart from me will not deliver you from my wrath and my judgment. And now I say to my generals, colonels, and captains, and all those who still call themselves by my name, to the fighting men and women, let not your hearts be troubled. For I will strip the veneer off those who feign to serve me, so you can see the evil one's plans behind those who send you to your death. The time is at hand that you will have to do what I have put in your heart to do. This is what Greg is just praying. You will have to resist the orders that have been given to you to destroy your brethren with all that is within your reach. I will lay out my plans clearly before you in dreams and visions and holy angelic encounters, for I, the Lord, will protect and provide for your families as you seek me in prayer and fasting and seek me with all your hearts. No human being... And as much as I don't like being human, I you know could have could have written that that long ago without it being given to him. And look, I'm nobody. I'm just a messenger. I'm uh, you know God appointed me to to warn His people. He promised. Why am I saying that? Because ladies and gentlemen, what Greg Evenson just shared when he prayed for the men and women, both in law enforcement and military, is a direct answer to that. And I don't think Greg uh, remembers, maybe he did, I don't know, I'll not speak for you, Greg, but how timely is that? You can tell when God has said something because of the timeless nature of it. And, it, and, and this is what uh, Michael, who put this in, I think, the latest CERN essay that's up on my website, I am against your plans. It was him who drew my attention to that. I didn't know that that appeared 14 times in Scripture. Behold, I am against thee. Behold, behold, behold. I am against thee. You know. So what that tells me, Doug, is that the entire defense industry, the entire powers that be, are at war with the King of Glory. The failures that they will see in battle will be so horrific. This isn't a uh, uh, trying to demoralize anybody. The only thing that will deliver, and, and I, I don't care if you're a naval man, an Air Force uh, man, Marine, whatever, your individual faith will deliver you. But unfortunately, because of your individual faith in Jesus Christ, you will be turned over to either be early outed or worse. So it's, we're now at that point. I concur, Greg, with what you just said. This is it, okay? When I say this is it, is someone will say, well, nothing happens tomorrow. See, you guys are false this, false that. Oh, yeah? Where were you 25 years ago? Where were you 40 years ago? Where were you people who are experts on everything? And, you know, one of, what I'm just trying to say is you are no place to be seen. So you take what's already happened, and then you put your twist on it. God will give his view and perspective before it happens. And know this, that the word of the Lord in that thing, do you not know that it was I who gave you the victories, will become so real and so prescient and so obvious as the and, and, and Greg, when Vladimir Putin brings the uh, Orthodox Christians uh, uh, priests out to bless his troops, you know. I and look, I, I know I understand communism. I understand the whole Cold War. I was a student of it. I don't understand everything, but I understand enough of it. But I'll tell you one thing. He at least knows where the power lies, and whoever honors God, they can honor God even out of their own motives, but God will still. And now look, the children of this world are more wise than the children of light. He will reap the benefits of honoring a godly principle. Our military will reap the death uh, benefits of not honoring godly principles. Satan is the quintessential divider of homes. He's the divider of houses. He's the divider of, of those who once walked in his ways. 
So while these guys are openly doing all their black magic, occult rituals, blood sacrifices, human sacrifices, uh, sexual perversion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it goes on and on and on. There is a God who loves his creation, who sent his son Jesus to die in our place, and that's who I stake all my trust in. Do I stake any trust in myself? Absolutely not. Do I trust myself? Absolutely not. Do I trust God? I'm working on it. But I see daily that I have to remind myself of what the Scripture says, because every day it's a battle, and it will be for everyone listening to this who trusts Jesus, because your eyes are going to deceive you. Your ears are going to deceive you. It may be members of your own family that will try and seduce you away from the truth. There are people who will try and literally seduce you, if you're a man or a woman, away from the truth. There's men who will come into your homes, especially ladies, trust God with your emotions, those of you who are single, and believe, seek, cry out for him to bring you the right man, because there's a whole lot of vampires out there, and I'm talking about people that do nothing but suck the life out of others. People don't fellowship with people that are unproven and untrue. Don't open your heart unwisely. Be, as somebody once told me, I said, yeah, I'm working on that part. Be an armadillo. armadillo. Be hard on the outside, meaning having your armor on, but be soft on the inside. And only open up to Jesus. And ask what, you know, David Langford taught me this. Ask the Lord, Lord, is the spirit behind this person of you or the evil one? And, you know, the bottom line is if you tell somebody, uh, you know, uh, uh, something, be very careful who you trust, and only trust people that have gone through it. Only trust people that have been in the battle, because someone who isn't battle-hardened really doesn't know how to respond. And I'm now talking about the things of the Spirit. So what Greg has prayed, for those of you in the military and law enforcement, that is a word of the Lord, and he prayed exactly the prophecy that God gave me to warn the people. And one of the parts I haven't released, the main part of it, I'll read you the last sentence of the paradise. I haven't really, I'm not trying to toy with you, but I can't until I'm told to. Already the drums of war beat louder and louder, and your betrayal by those who back you draws closer with each minute of the day. Uh, how is that, Doug? Mm. You know? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, and, so, and, so yeah, you know, knowing, and yeah, knowing, knowing the inside, uh, inside uh, part of that, yeah, I, I got to tell you, Steve, your um, <laughs> confirmation by by two or more, indeed, uh, and, and yeah, you're absolutely right. So, uh, go ahead. Mm. Well, I'm done, Greg. I'll turn it over to you, sir. Uh, fellas, I just uh, want to tell you here as we approach the end uh, that uh, I, I have no. Uh, the Lord allows me uh, the joy of sharing uh, this important uh, uh, format with you uh, every once in a while. And I, I can't tell you how grateful I am, Doug and Joe, that, that you are warriors. You're men of faith. You are men who are not intimidated. You are men who do not bend. You are, you are people that believe, and you're committed to something. And I, I, I look, if I've got to fall in battle... I want to fall with people like that. I've got uh, kids and grandkids all over this country that I love very much and good friends and family that I love dearly. But I have to tell you, when it comes down to it, I want to be surrounded by with men like Steve Quayle and Doug and Joe Hagman and others uh, that, that believe and practice that and know the living Lord. Thank you for the privilege of being with you tonight, uh, my good buddy Steve. Uh, uh, thanks for uh, uh, letting me be with you tonight, and and uh, you guys take care. I'm going to go rest my voice. <laughs> God bless you. Thanks. You deserve it. Your pr- right. prayers. Well, uh, you'll be on our prayers, uh, and we we pray for your your recovery and your continued uh, restoration of your health. Absolutely, Greg. Even thank you, from sir. USA. God God bless. Have a good night, Greg. Steve, another great program. I just want to say God bless you, brother, and uh, uh, may God continue to re- restore and heal you and uh, be with you. And, and uh, you know, we're in this fight together, brother. We are. We are, Doug. But, you know, uh, greater is he who's within us and he who's in the world. But people have got to understand the greatness of he who's in us. I want to say this in closing, and then my voice is gone, too. The... Best education I ever got in the scripture was from Derek Prince, D-E-R-E-K, Prince.org. 
are you can go on YouTube and watch his videos. An amazing man of God, but more important, I would encourage everyone to start learning the Bible like you've never learned it. One of the best ways to do it is to go to sleep with the Word of God. I used to do that. I don't do it now. I'm going to go back to doing it because I used to sleep like a baby. But it, what happens is the Word of God, the Word is sharper than a two-edged sword. And what it does, it builds you up in the inner man. So ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are struggling in every area of life, I can tell you this. There is the book of life. It's not the book of the damned. It's not the book of the dead. It's not the Egyptian book of the dead. People want to hang. I am in a statement, Doug. People shouldn't play with dead things, nor should they hang out with them. Okay? I don't want to seek the living amongst the dead. Hmm. And so uh, go to Derek Prince, you know, on uh, YouTube, or go to DerekPrince.org and uh, read uh, forgive me, read the availability of all the different uh, DVDs. And I, I want to share this. I watched my son, my helicopter pilot's son, uh, his life was literally transformed by listening to those and just feasting on the Word of God. And I've watched other people who have sent me emails, people that have been hopeless and helpless. And I also want you to go and read. We have a brother who really needs prayer. Uh, an ex-policeman named Lewis, but I want you to read his testimony. His, the reason I'm putting up testimonies is this. One of the things I miss the most about when I used to fellowship in churches, uh, Ben and others, those of you who have been associated with the AG Church, you'll know that you can basically, you, you, you would have times where in, in the old time, you, people would get up and testify at what God was doing. And it, there was no doubt that God is still alive. So the testimonials I took down, I got, you know, well, I won't even go into that. They're put back up because the testimonials will show you how God is moving. When somebody sends me an email and says they're about ready to end their life, and because they listen to us, and because God spoke to them, and Doug, you helped this brother, I helped the brother, that's not the issue. The issue is God stopped him from blowing out his brains, Okay. Is that not his words, Doug? Did I? I mean, you know, I mean, it's in the That's testimony. That's absolutely so right. So I thank God. Yeah, I thank God for everyone whose lives have been touched. And if you've had a supernatural touch from God, just send it to me. I'll never put your name up. I'll never expose you, but just put testimony in the uh, subject line. Because what that does is I've had people now say, wow, this is how God's touching them and listening to this. When you and I and Joe get emails from all over the world, from Australia, and I want to say God bless you in Australia, God bless you in New Zealand, God bless the brethren in, in South Africa. I remember discussing South Africa 22 years ago on talk radio, saying, as goes South Africa, so goes the United States. If you understand what's happened to South Africa and what's happened to Rhodesia, you'll understand exactly what's going to happen to the United States. Because men and women who, uh, who settled that land, basically, and those lands, were driven by a force of the love of God, and I want to put a, an end to one story. Before you even give me all this slavery stuff, go and look about the history of slavery. I am opposed to slavery, always have been. But it was the, the history of slavery, it ends up in the Middle East. It ends up in the parts of North Africa who are raiding South Africa to sell slaves as commodity into Europe and the rest of the world. So what I'm saying is this, I believe that he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And I don't give a, a bloody rip what the liars, how they rewrite history. True history is true history. So while we pray, keep our brethren in South Africa uh, in, in your prayers. Keep our brethren in Australia and New Zealand in your prayers. Keep our brethren in Great Britain. Boy, it takes a lot to be a Christian in Great Britain. God bless every single man and woman who's a believer in Great Britain and Ireland and Scotland. What they're up against is unimaginable. And God bless, I'm not just singling these people out. I'm just saying that we have become so snooty and so self-centered, egotistical, selfie, that we forget the rest of the world. And when I get emails from them that they're praying for us because they know the way we're headed, I want to say thank you, God, for being so amazing and wonderful. Well, Doug, bless you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
Again, Joe, bless you. Thank you. Uh, Greg, may the Lord God of heaven grant you total healing, total restoration. He is a man's man. And, I, you know, I, I say this with no flattery, but, oh, how I would like to be more like that man and less like I am like I am. A scripture says I'm not to compare myself to anyone, but the qualities, it, it is so refreshing to see someone who is a hero. He'll never tell you that. His battlefield experience, Green Beret, is time in law enforcement. Gentlemen out there listening, you want to hear a man's man. You just heard one. And that guy, is not, he's not a, a wannabe or a supposed be. He is a real thing. And God bless him. I think we're blessed, Doug, to have him in our lives. And thank the Lord God of heaven. Blessed be the name of the Lord, who inhabits the praises of his people. I pray every person that listened to this broadcast, at the time you hear it, when it's over, you fall to your knees and thank Jesus for what a great redemption he's given to us through his blood by saving us from our sin. Good night, Doug. Good night, Joe.